Welcome in, MJ38 Show, episode number 19. 19 episodes. We keep on moving, baby. 19. Welcome in. I don't even know about it. You don't even know about it, but we're going to find out. Hopefully your day's going well. How's your day going, Doug? It's good. It's a good day. It's a great day. I feel wonderful. Yeah. I hope you're having a great day, too. <laughs> Hell yes. The waters are warm. Get in there with the drive. Get in there, in there with the dishes, on the run, in the gym, wherever you're at. Keep on going. Don't stop. Keep going. Unless you have to stop. If you have to stop, then stop. Stop well. <laughs> Super stop. <laughs> Super stop. On Hard a, stop. On a dime. On a dime with it. Yes, don't hit that guy in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Pay attention. Yeah, man. Well, but life's moving. We're moving fast. 19 Dude, episodes deep. That intro is great. I love that intro. Nice. Yeah. I, yeah we're get, you're getting better at that. Appreciate it. Yeah. I guess that's what would happen if you did 19 of these. 19, 19 deep. <laughs> yeah, I felt that one. I was like, oh, that's closer to... Like a standardized one we could do. That's solid. That was yeah. quick. Yeah, Efficient. That was... Get in, get out. <laughs> I like naming like the, all the, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. We'll break that down. I hope you guys are progressing as well, you know, hopefully. Yeah. I think anything you do, you get better at it. You know? Yeah. The story's going, the pages are turning. Hopefully you're in a, in a peak. Hopefully you're peaking. Peak. 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 If you're in a valley, just keep on going. The peaks are coming. Yeah. That's really, we're here for the valley folk, to be honest with you. <laughs> Enjoy the peak, but I'm right there. And I'm there all with you. All about some valley fruit. <laughs> yeah. This is the foxhole. Welcome to the trench talk. Yeah. Foxhole, baby. Trench talk. That's hard. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, most it. of the time, that's my perspective is like, uh, we got to get up and grind. We got to go get it. We got to make the world go around every single day, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or we got to make sure that our existence in the world while it's going around is solid yeah i gotta Stable, make i gotta steady. make my world go around you know yeah. so nothing will go without me yeah my world is yeah for real it won't <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta, you gotta be on pace with time time's not stopping no it doesn't it don't stop tom just <laughs> tom stops for no man that's mm. justin that's justin that's a justin impersonating a drake <laughs> <laughs> justin with a drake filter on yeah yeah, but man, this doesn't stop. So hopefully your days are going well because that, that shit adds up quick. Weeks add up quick. I know it's so cliche and everyone tells you that when you're young. But as you get older, we're nearing 30 now. <gasps> I feel it now. I get it. <laughs> I think I was talking to you about it in reference to uh, I can feel good in getting older because we've been doing fantasy football for 10 years now. This is our, We just did our 10th draft last night. Shout out to that. Quick shout out. All the draft folk. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for hosting. Up, dude. Steve Johnson. Love you. Hell of a guy. I love you. Hell of a guy. Fucking love that guy. Love fantasy football. Love Steve Johnson. But we've been doing it for 10 years now. And I think that my recollection this year of last year is like, I think that the resolution of my last season recall is just getting better every year. I think that's a product of getting older and experiencing time in a more nuanced way. Yeah. To where a year is not a year anymore to me. Or like a year is still 365 or 366 days, but it hits different <laughs> whenever you've accumulated 30 of those. Yeah. Define what you meant when you said, uh, your recollection of the previous year was more... Yeah, or like, I feel like now, like going into this upcoming football season, I remember last season very well insofar as like who did good, who was bad, what the narratives were attached to each position, how I felt in last year's draft. And like, like I was able, I don't know, I was able to, it was not anywhere near as hard to just like go back and recall all of that information. Because I remember going into some drafts in the previous 10 years and being like, what happened last year? Who was good? Who sucked? He, he was bad, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you weren't like super yeah, tuned I into... I didn't know exactly like... I was like, wait, what, why is he bad exactly? Or what's going on with him? And it's like, oh, it's like a, a, a two-back a two back backfield. Like he's not going to get... He's going to be splitting touches, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Yeah. Or it's like, oh, he's not even... He might not even make the roster. They have three running backs on the depth chart, depth, depth chart blah, blah, blah. And yeah. like, just like being able to know the nuances and then I guess know what the nuances are and then understand them more and be able to just recollect that whole year so much more clearly. That is a crazy skill because you would think that as you're getting older, maybe you would be like less tuned Losing in. Losing it. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You'd be like. The screws are getting loose. I don't know. Just like, uh, cause especially because sometimes fantasy football is like a kid sport. So like you, the college mm. kids are like with nothing to do. They yeah. really like watch every game and they're doing everything. A lot of times people, my dad would be like, you need to apply that kind of focus to like other stuff. <laughs> and then what I think happens as you grow up is like you do apply that focus to other stuff, yes. which would make maybe the like uh, me, I guess, think that you would be less tuned into what's going on. Mm. But what's actually happening is as you're able to process time faster because the weeks are going by faster to you and mm. they're not like so long in between, you're like able to remember with more definition what's going on from a year ago because it wasn't so long ago. Yeah. Or maybe, yeah. Yeah. Or it's like I'm able to. Maybe where it's like getting better at the process of extracting 
what we deem to be the most valuable information. Yes. You know, and then as we get do it more and more over time, we get better at determining what is the most valuable information, and then we're getting better at determining what it is, and then we're getting better at extracting out what it is. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Yeah. And then from that point, because people were just doing good or bad, and then you just like saw that. Like, oh, this guy sucks. <laughs> oh, this guy's good. <laughs> you know, I was like, wait, why did this, how did this happen? I'm like, oh, because offensive coordinators move teams, and head coaches move teams, and like offensive lines really matter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and being on a good team is better than being on a bad team, unless you want receivers, because if you're bad, you're probably down in the fourth quarter throwing deep passes. You know what I'm saying? It gets deep. It gets deep. It, there's <laughs> it gets a lot deep. of, but then once you have a standard for understanding, like what actually what's makes important? someone good or bad, what you value in like a situation. What's is, true. It, what's, what's true and what's real. Yes. Then you're able to just go to that extracted information and then apply the new narrative to the extracted information. And then I think that's why we're able to just be like, I'm going with this one, this one, this one, this one. Mm-hmm. A lot different than before we're like, Derrick Henry's good. <laughs> I'll take Derrick Henry. You know, ESPN says this, this guy's top five. ESPN yeah. definitely is right. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. That's And then you kind of hope other people are going along with the narratives that you disagree with to some degree. So that way not everybody's doing the same thing anyways, you know? Yeah. But uh, the cool thing about a draft is that it's like on the fly. Like everything you had thought you knew is out the window. Like <laughs> you go in with like a – People behave <laughs> not how you think they're going to behave. <laughs> no. What they thought was valuable. All of a sudden mm-hmm. you're not sure if that's – like, everyone's taking stuff we thought was invaluable. All of a sudden, you're like, wait, am I dumb? Is wait, that valuable? <laughs> am I stupid? <laughs> <laughs> they told me that this was valuable the whole time. <laughs> what do they know that I don't know? <laughs> yeah. It goes it goes into its own game. Like, just yeah. like a basketball game, you can always talk all you want, and then you line it up and play one time, and you have, like, an outcome. It's like we get to have an outcome, which yeah. is what I love about, like, a draft. It's like a game almost. It's fun. Super fun, man. But, yeah, so time is crazy like that. <laughs> time goes by quick. Dude. And a recollection of time. I guess that's what we're our, our experience of time. The more we experience time, the better we get at it, hopefully. And the e- maybe not easier it is, but it feels like I just feel like the years are flying by more and more, man. Just boom, boom, boom. And it's such a cliche thing. It's a cliche thing, but it hits. Yeah, you're feeling it right now mm-hmm. because now when we do something that happened a year ago, it's like that was a year. Yeah. No way. Right. No way. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that what didn't happen to me so much as a kid. I, like the time was dragging so hard. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, I guess I don't know. I can't remember. It was so long. Yeah. By the time I got to my birthday, it was just like life was so clearly different to me. I was like obviously in yeah. a different grade with. Different that's what. It, that, that's like, another thing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But you could just have a whole year go by now, and like it's not. It doesn't so, look so much drastically different. You're not a whole foot taller. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't put on a whole extra 30 pounds. You're just growing through right? your, growth, your growth spurts. You're becoming – yeah, exactly. That's a whole part of it. Mm-hmm. And you're, like, excited to be that next in the next grade or to be a little bit older because you're, like mm-hmm. – everyone kind of shits on young kids. So you're, like, well, I'm going to be – I don't have any responsibility. <laughs> I don't have any – I don't have any say. <laughs> you guys don't trust me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're always trying to get older so we can like whatever prove our point. I'll have more say. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to listen to me. I'll have more independence, I guess. Or yeah, also more agency. I'm yeah. sick of doing what they're doing. I want to do what I want to do. Yeah, always being, always being not in control. <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> always being at the at this at the will of someone else's control, submission to some degree. Their parents, <laughs> organization. Right. Yeah, so there's that. So I think you want to be that newer, the next level up. Yeah, there's that excitement to do that coupled or juxtaposed with now. Sometimes we're like, don't want to get older, maybe, or even yeah, if you're that just like, to people for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Right, or if you're just net neutral about it, even mm-hmm. it's just like, almost. You, I wasn't like excited for this, and now I'm here, and it's happening. And it, it wasn't I just celebrating last year? It's like I still have the same clothes that I wore to celebrate <laughs> last year. They're like right there. <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just different, different experience as an adult. Yeah, I guess it doesn't. That's crazy that we, I don't know. I'm, I'm like tripping on that idea right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, cause yeah, you can go from being 12 to 13, and like that could be a fucking jump, dog. You know what I'm <laughs> that could be a jump in a year. Yeah, for real. Like when you start the sixth grade versus when you start the seventh grade, or whatever, start eighth grade versus ninth grade, or whatever that one year gap is. Sometimes it could be drastic, man. And even that two year gap, it could be like just huge physical, obvious changes. But in this, when you get older, when you stop growing physically. It's like it's maybe you're yeah you, it, you can't see the growth maybe the growth is gonna be maybe sometimes you can see it I guess in like a, your elevation like how well you're doing per se 
Things are things are stable. You're on top of your shit. That's what I saw at the fantasy draft. It was, looked like that. I saw like uh, a lot you of my, look taller, but <laughs> yeah, people were glowing more brightly. Something like that, right? Yeah, people's energy was more like stark and more defined. And people's I personalities like that word. were. <laughs> yeah, me too. Ah, that was a good one. It felt like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I almost didn't say it, and I was like, no, it's a dunk. <laughs> That's a slam. Yeah. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's all the money. Their energy was like that. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. But it's hard. it's also like an abstract idea that was hard to quite put my finger on while I was there. But like, um, mm-hmm. man, it's like, I guess ideally we are <clears throat> we are going through another year of time and that we can use that to like uh, become a more enhanced version of ourselves or, you know, I guess you're just like more becoming is what hap- what's happening the whole year. So mm-hmm. if you see someone who's became more of what they're becoming – it's just like uh, I don't know. It's inspiring sometimes. Yeah, it, it, it I think it in, induces positive emotion. Yeah, like there maybe unless you're or the Canaan Cain and Abel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it could be both ways, right? Uh-huh. Right. I guess super the, just objectively. Well, it's easy with love. I love those guys, so I want to yeah. see them up. You your know dogs, what I'm saying? Yeah, like your best friends. Like oh, I love those guys, man. You yeah, wanna, I want you want to see them do well. You want to see them win. Fuck yes, dude. Yeah, and I think. Uh, Man, like Derek's just becoming more of a dad and more of like this like critical thinker and more of this just like I don't know, man. <laughs> he's <laughs> such a character, bro. Like I love it. Like he could be in a book for real. Just he's like mm. stoic and um really like talks with like uh like one of those people that doesn't say anything, but when he says something, everybody really listens, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. he really embodies that. He's not like trying to do that. Mm. And uh I don't know, man. It's it's crazy because I know him as a kid. And it's crazy. I'm like, you're an adult. That's like, you're like an impactful adult, dude. Like you're Mm -hmm. giving it. I think everybody here really took something away from their conversations with you tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like, so crazy, man. And and yeah, I love that. I love that my people are becoming these people that are, you know, like characters out of a movie. Like, I'm just like, man, dude, you're fucking doing it, dude. Like, I'm a fan of you. You know what I'm saying? hundred percent, man. It's super. Yeah. You love it. Love to see it. Yeah. See it. Dogs. So that. Like, so in regards to passing of time, I remember like three or four years ago, I didn't really like feel that thing per se. Like we were still all trying to like get it together to some degree. And like, we're all still trying to get it together to some degree, but like, it's crazy to see it, me see more like steadfastness in everybody of mm-hmm. like themselves. They're like, they are a brighter version of themselves and like, yeah, yeah, that's just tight, man. Mm hmm. Just tight. Everyone's stepping into their full form or whatever. Yeah, whatever their authentic self is, whatever that looks like. Yeah. And it's like to see it come more more to fruition or more resolution of that higher self. It's like, ah, keep doing that, man. That's awesome. That's badass. Dude. It's great. Super I'm just, cool. I'm tripping on that, man. <laughs> That's why I think it's good to, I don't know. I, that's why I love that we do that is because it brings to a, a lot of times when you become an adult, at least for me, like you kind of lose touch with everybody. It's just hard to. That's another like common, like cliche thing, but or, like that you hear when you're growing up. But I, it's I'm now that we're here. Wrong. Very Please true. Who's talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Serious on you. That was weird. But no. it's super weird. It's super strange. Or like now that we're here, it is very a real thing. It's like, ah, oh, life's going so fast. And you have, if, you, if you're not able to, like, plan out, like, a month in advance or, like, four weeks in advance or maybe even two weeks in advance something, then, like, it's hard to do. It's hard to just on the fly do shit whenever you're, have, whenever you're a kid. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I don't have anything tying me down particularly. But then you trade that freedom for the shackles of responsibility and your cross <laughs> that you bear. Ideally, right? Yeah. And then we respect each other for working so hard. Like, by the time I see you, I'm like, yeah, man, good shit. Way to be in the foxhole for three months. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, that's how we're kind of supposed to be living. But, and I think we proxy that with, like, social media where we're down to stay connected with each other. And I'm, like, seeing you go through what you're going through through, like, social media. Mm -hmm. And especially with, like, Facebook, I think, like, adults that are older than me, use that a lot to like stay connected with people i think that's correct i think right. their demographic the facebook demographic is older i'm pretty sure that's like common knowledge. and instagram's not quite the same because we're staying connected but it's like i don't even know bro we're not like posting our life on instagram in like a in like an order of events of like <laughs> it's not real yeah like, it's not that's what i'm saying is yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. a lot of people are just like it's not realistic trying to post an image or whatever you know yes <clears throat> their brand the brand of you <laughs> what's your brand yeah exactly dude which is like crazy talk what are you about no nah. so anyways i love that we do get together with our like really close friends at least once a year because mm-hmm. we can like see 
all, the growing up of us, which is kind of crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's super cool. Because, yeah, as I mentioned, that was our 10th year. So we, we've been doing this since we were teenagers. Yeah. Now we're nearing 30 and shit. <laughs> it's Got crazy. kids and shit. It's wild. But yeah. it's like, yeah, it's like natural order. Natural order of life. Like, just time progresses and that's what it looks like to some degree, you know? It just fucking happens. Yeah. It's been happening like that for a long time. Way longer than we've been here. We're just, like, taking part in this cycle. You know what I'm saying? We're just, like, interjected as this wheel's just, like, turning. And then we're in it at this particular 2023 20, time point. But, yeah, it's super cool that we get to tap in with our friends that we've known for a long time. It's the best. I love those guys so much, man. Yeah, I don't know if... I'm sure... <coughs> well, I know fantasy, fantasy football is a fucking gigantic thing nowadays. Yeah. But I'm not sure how big our fan base... Or what, what the overlapping demographic of that is. Oh, yeah. But well, someone it's in, awesome, y'all. I was say, <laughs> so, someone in your life plays fantasy football. Yeah. If it's not you, it's your homeboy. If, mm-hmm. if, or it could be your boyfriend or I your know dad. there's a league. At, at work, there's a league going on. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a part of it, that's okay. But I know there's a work, a work league going on in wherever you work right now. Definitely. And so one of the best parts of fantasy football is is the draft. That People go crazy for it. And, like, mm. it's just cool. Uh a work league is one thing because sometimes you just want to have something to talk about with people at work. But I love that we have like a league of record where we have like all of our just really close friends scattered out throughout like Texas and Tennessee. Yeah, now it's been fucking. Or we have like this. We've had like a, a core group of like five people like stay throughout like the whole thing virtually. Yeah, and maybe we've had people stay on for like at least half or at least six or seven or eight years. Yeah, there's from seven and under, there's like six. To, a lot of people. A lot of people are. Over there. half. Yeah, definitely. The majority's yeah. been there over seven years at least. Yeah. Just fucking cool, dude. That's cool. Yeah, that's tight. <laughs> like, we've really grown up with these people. Mm-hmm. Jordan's an accountant. Like, it's so cool, man. He was like the best athlete I ever knew. And he was like my best friend. And like, yeah. he was just such an OG, like, cool dude. And like. Uh, I knew him. <laughs> yeah. We grew up, yeah. We, we, like, when, before we started the league, we knew him when we were like. 12. We knew some of these kids when we were like 10, 11, 12. Oh, yeah. I forgot they were missing that part. And yeah. Then we started the league when we were like in our teens. Yeah. 18. Like 19, 18, 19 years yeah. old, like at college, just doing college things, playing college fantasy teams. football. It was like, I've never done Fuck it. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Let's get into it, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> but no, we, now we're here at this point. It's tight. I guess I feel similarly about va- vacation. I feel like people kind of will go on yearly vacations to go like mm-hmm. see people they love, like within tradition like that, or like go on vacation with like, I don't know your boy somewhere, and I feel like that. Uh, that's kind of another annual checkup to kind of like see how you've been doing in the last year of your life. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's cool to be growing up because I didn't really see a lot of difference from like twenty three to twenty four to twenty five. But then now I feel like we're like, it's a whole thing. Like our energy is so like more defined and bigger and broader, and we're mm-hmm. like a better representation of these ideas that we carry. Yeah become more sophisticated socialites where we're like able to enjoy people's company and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know, like when Steve hosts a party, it's like, it makes me understand that hosting is like a whole thing. Like uh, we talked the last mm-hmm. episode about how there's like levels and layers of like everything. But yeah. then Steve is just such a good host that it like kind of blows my mind sometimes. And we're just having like such a good time, bro. Love it. Uh, I don't know. You just fantasy. F- I don't know. It's cool that we're at this point now because I feel yeah. like uh, I remember just being a kid, like, more or less, or being like a dumb young adult. Just, just going. Just, just making your way downtown. Yeah. <laughs> Walking fast. I remember, it's crazy. Bro. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it changes it's so quick. It's so nice. It's so great. All of it's enjoyable, I think. I think some people want to fight it or some people want to grow up too fast or some people want to accelerate or decelerate time don't want to grow up too fast or you know what i'm saying yeah but i think you could just if you're able to adopt the like the the mindset or the i don't know maybe the ability to wrestle with your mindset like no matter where you're at you're able to accept because wherever you're at it's gonna suck there's gonna be things that suck about everywhere you're at no matter what age you are <laughs> things are gonna suck so true right so maybe if you're maybe if you're able to just like try to tackle the meta suck of life, <laughs> you'll be able to enjoy all the ages. And it's cool to grow up. It's cool to have our memory, to be able to look back and be like, ah, and then to see now where we're at. Like, ah, that's so cool. To be able to, yeah. It's, it's tiny. neat. It's fucking neat. It's fucking neat, bro. <laughs> it's fucking neat, man. You guys bring, my life feels so enriched when we do stuff yeah. like that, you know? It's good for your soul. Yeah. We're social creatures, man. Dude. Absolutely. And it's cool. Be, or another thing I think I've also realized is 
I, I expressed this sentiment to my aunt and uncle a couple years ago, like four, maybe like three or four years ago. But and now it's even more holds even more water, especially because we've been because uh, I guess whenever I was out of college, we worked at that uh, cement place, and not a lot of people working with. Only worked with like three coworkers really, and then then going to a restaurant setting to where we're dealing with hundreds of people every day, multiple times a week. Yeah, so different. So like now we're we're exposed to so much more society and so much more of what socio internet like interpersonal relationships are like at work and then also between like guests and like just the whole the whole shebang of society yeah and like now i'm able to because yeah i express to them like man i love y'all man like y'all like your family of course i love you guys but like i've been around enough people now to like see that like y'all are like good people like y'all are dope like just like objectively just like not even like a part of this family like y'all are like cool and like we can see that with our friends or like you know what i'm saying like y'all are just tight like yeah. y'all, are just, y'all are just good people man yeah it's tight it's cool it's the best too. <clears throat> yeah. 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 So I was I was thinking about how when you were talking about that, this thought came across to me that we're like you said, we're dealing with so many socio social interactions every day uh-huh. that I being just like my more genuine, authentic self, like a me that's not dealing with that, like I do a good job of being authentic when I'm dealing with that. But, like, me just, like, truly not dealing with that and just being authentic is, like, a different person, more or less. And I felt it when I went to go watch Oppenheimer. I was not, like, nervous in my own skin. But it was like driving a car I hadn't really driven in a long time. And I was, like... (laughs) Just, like, taking yourself out, like, (laughs) into, like, society. Yeah. Into the wilderness. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Just, like, uh, walking into a place Uh just, like, by myself and just being, like, like, like... it was kind of awkward because I didn't know – you don't buy tickets outside where there's not like a ticket kiosk like when I grew up. I'm getting old now. <laughs> Back in my day, we would buy our tickets at the movie theater kiosks. <laughs> I'm going to go see a movie. I, I pay the passage and I watch the movie. That was it. But like, no, nah, but but yes, more or less. I had like bought the tickets online, but I just uh-huh. like didn't know exactly what I would do with that or whatever. And then like have to na- – just navigating that slight social – social interaction between getting myself into my seat and like ordering food it was and i imagine this is what people went through in covid is that like it was a little bit startling to me just like how i hadn't really used that car in a long time and how i felt kind of like awkward and like didn't i needed to like get myself to just feel like relaxed I need to like work through that you know what i'm saying yeah like a, like a tequila helped it's like oh god they're all looking at me <laughs> <laughs> and i was like how do i walk how do i walk <laughs> how, do I, how do i walk when i look normal <laughs> Do you have a normal walk? <laughs> you ask yourself that? That was me. I'm walking to my seat. And then, like, yo, like, at first, there's, like, a guy. I'm sitting, like, right next to a guy. And there's, like, because it's, like, my assigned seat, right? Oh, yeah. You buy, like, an actual. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Right. And then there's, like, a bunch of open seats. And I'm, I'm just, like, man, I just. Of course. <laughs> of course this fucking guy is here already. This early bird. <laughs> It's like it's just like peeing next to somebody in the bathroom. Yeah. I was like, this is just weird, bro. This is my assigned urinal. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then I was like weighing out the consequences of just taking another seat. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, this is like, they'll never know. <laughs> what are the odds that this seat's taken, taken too? And then the lady comes up and talks to me and then talks to, you know, the people. He's with like a family of people. So it's not like he could just move. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then walks back past me. And then I'm like, well, she's marked me here now. I'm definitely, that's one more consequence if I move. And at that point, I'm like, I'm just having like a Seinfeld ass moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where like, this is what happens. See, if- I'm so in my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens if you just get in your own head like get out of like i just like kind of like let it go and then yeah. that's the thing that i'm saying that i had to i didn't have this thing at that point i like like pushed it out of me and just yeah. like was in the moment okay i'm here yeah I actually get like grounded yeah that trend like i had to i wasn't there was like a a moment where i needed to transfer states and i think that like People I know sometimes or just like people in general that I've seen just like uh, something that I've realized that's important to be able to do that is that thing right there. It's just change state from like, I don't know, whatever that like. uh, Like mentally? Yeah, I think sometimes there's like a like a. I don't know. Sometimes I think it's just like what I see people trying to do with them with themselves is like, oh, you just need to like transfer states. And it's like hard because you're in this initial state and it's like you're people – I just see people with like a struggle or like an issue or like a thing going on. And I'm like – you just like 
transfer states. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be like Gucci. And then I've just like I don't know if that makes I don't know if that makes sense across the board because it's just a neuro association to a skill that I've learned or like am learning. Yeah. But it's like that transfer states is like important because otherwise like uh, I think it's part of the growing like detach detaching but then also like for me it's like becoming aware of the situation to a point where like you're like i'm being silly yeah yeah, yeah. or like not being an actor or like being like cut <laughs> <laughs> yeah just be like hold on what's this character doing here yeah this guy's being you're being ridiculous like how am i it, acting <laughs> yeah exactly it, that's well put yeah. and then from that place like uh from that place i'm able to i just sit there and I'm like, it's funny to me that I have, I'm acting all of those ways. In the writer's room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm dog. Just hanging out in that writer's room of the meanness of that moment. And then I'm like, how do I want to be? Like, how do I want to think about these things? Like, mm -hmm. how do I want to, what's, if that thing bothers me so much, like, what's wrong about it? And then how do I just like come to a better understanding of it and sit in this place with it, more or less? Mm -hmm. And like, um, I think that for personally, there's been like a lot of folly and a lot of like uh, pointless upset feelings whenever i'm not just like pulling out to look at things for what they are you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah yeah i feel that 100 percent. I, I think i can empathize with that because i felt i, I think i can kind of talk to about or relate to what you're saying but uh because oh. like whenever i walk i guess in heb is an example like grocery store or yeah i guess it because uh, we were just like walking uh like out you can get, get your groceries we're checking out we're leaving and to get like through the the final little sliding doors, there's like a little a spectrum or whatever an AT and T little kiosk setup, you know what I'm saying? And then like whenever you're walking up to that, I could feel like that that unease or like that like uh, it's like oh god, part of me wants to like go around them, you know? What I'm <laughs> I want to take a wide berth around that area. Yeah, it's like don't interact with me. I don't want to talk to you. I ain't got time for this. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like instead of you know what I'm saying, be like being like or having that feeling influence my behavior i'm just able to go into the writer's room and be like you're being silly dog just yeah. like walk straight through take that head on and then if they do approach you just hit them with a stiff arm like derrick henry dog <laughs> like <laughs> just no thank you i'm good yeah yeah well guys that thing's kind of like hard to like embrace and that you, you develop have... it it's hard to do yeah you and probably this... take the wide berth the first couple of times but then maybe the you know what i'm saying you can slowly like get to the derrick, Ar derrick henry stiff arm seriously and practice it in your head rehearse it it's like what am i gonna say what am yeah. i gonna say when he approaches me yeah, and it seems silly. You feel like seems silly. It right? seems silly. Yeah, you're like there's part of me that's like, man, if you were really all that, you would just do all that. You wouldn't have to be telling yourself what you're gonna have to say to this person. And I'm like, <laughs> false dog. That's cop. That's cop. You're gonna have to like. Th that's how mm. it happens. A vision for it. You yeah, know? rehearse it. Yeah, yeah, rehearse it. Let it come out. Like in that moment, don't just don't get shaky. Like I feel like sometimes I walk into a moment just bare boned, and I'm like, think I'm able to just draw like creatively work my way through it in that moment and mm -hmm. i'm like if i would have just like given myself a little bit of energy in the preparation if i would have like seen this moment before i was in this moment then i wouldn't yeah. be so like shaky right now 100 percent. i'm trying to hit like a 100 yard shot i'm like oh fuck i gotta go and it's just like a lot all in that moment to yeah. just like you know what i'm saying yeah in your defense in our defense we kind of did like force ourselves into that sponsor like creative spontaneity with freestyling so yeah we're kind of used to it's like make it happen right now <laughs> and serving tables yeah because sometimes you're just on the fly with it yeah I, I learned that sometimes you just walk up and say hey like that's that's all i got <laughs> everything else is going to come to me but right now you need to go say hey to that that table right now yeah and like uh that's a lot of spontaneity for one moment yeah even freestyling i'm kind of like all right i'm gonna say gravity and mad at me i don't want to yeah i don't want to start this yeah and then i'm like i'll work my way into it or like i feel a vibe or like i guess that's what happens with the spontaneity is like you end up feeling like the vibe of the moment and then like it draws an energy out of you that you like play and create with right then which yeah. is like yeah what you said why do you think that's in our defense what do you mean i'm just saying that like uh, i think that the preparation is important and like it, it is like just beneficial across the board you know what i'm saying like to rehearse it in your mind to visualize it before you do it to see the scene before you're in the scene but I think that uh, I think I think that saying like preparation is a uh, the, the like the spontaneity of create or the freestyling, it's like the opposite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I guess in, in that regard, in that particular instance, if you're freestyling, you can't really prepare for that. Like you know, that's literally the opposite. Like we're trying to break the rules in that aspect. But I think the, the rule is the rule of thumb is the preparation is that's how you that's how you win. If you rehearse it in your mind a whole bunch of times, like before, like when you get there, you're like you're already there. Or like I remember, I realized that, I, or something similar to that, crossed my mind in college when I was like, I'd be sitting there. It'd be I don't know, fucking Friday or Saturday. I'm off classes. I'm good until Monday. I'm chilling. I know that coming on Tuesday, I have uh, like a project that we're gonna get started, or like that's like I have to be at a certain point. Maybe not like a test or something like that, but I have something coming up. 
And like I could let that anxiety build of like, oh man, that thing's gonna be that, that thing's gonna suck. That thing's gonna be fucking awful. I don't want to. Oh, I can't wait. Or I'm, I'm dreading Tuesday. Yeah. But then I realized that like I'm just gonna look at it. Like if I was like literally look at like the paperwork, just like look at all the shit and like like okay. And like then I put it away. Like it was not scary at all when when Tuesday came around. I was fucking ready for it. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. It's so much different, dude. Hell yes. That's hard. The, that, pre- the preparation is like important. That's hard. Like I think it's. And re- I think you would think that you, for whatever reason, there's like clout attached to just showing up and acing the test and not needing to look at it and not being afraid for a moment, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. Cause you kind of have to accept that there's a problem. You're like, fuck, I feel this feeling of like dread. Like you said, there's a dragon out there. Yeah. There's a dragon outside. And I'm kind of afraid of it, it might destroy me. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, it, but allowing yourself to be vulnerable in that moment gives you the framework to ha- do a little bit of preparation to try mm. to maybe fight it. And that's the hard thing. Yeah. And, uh, good on you you did great in school <laughs> you fucking did well you know that what i'm saying it. yeah bro it's crazy it's like uh i don't know i have that now too because like i've realized that because in our in our current employment we're going through like a training of uh just learning a whole bunch of wine knowledge and shit and learning all of that thing i mentioned that before but learning like going over the menu and everything and like before i go into class or like it's much more or less class like <laughs> we're like we're just like learning all this shit and like talking about theory of like hypothetical situations and like going through interviews and going through like our steps and procedures and processes and whatever you know what I'm saying? like look like logistically how's everything gonna work and whatever like just talk like think tanking a lot of shit and like learning a lot of shit so it is like school almost to a degree and like i just yeah i guess it's kind of that that habit from like what if like we're learning all of our wines by the glass like i would just look at my notes like just just for like three minutes you know what i'm saying just like real quick from like the day before or whatever it's like Okay, yeah, I remember that. Okay, okay, I remember that. And then, like, it would just stick. It's just, like, it sticks. It's, like, working out. It's, like, if you just consistently look at your notes, just, like, for, like, five minutes a day. Just, like, a little bit. And, like, by the time you get into the preparation or into the moment, like, you'll be, you'll, it's, it's so much easier to just have that groundwork already laid out and then build from there. Because then if you're, like, sometimes you, people will just be relearning the same thing. It's, like, we've already learned that. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, but it's not sticking. There's, like, the recall. It's not, you, you don't have it on... You know, you know so you need to be able to you need to be able to quick wheel some of this shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Especially on the floor. If like a guest is asking about something. Oh yeah. You need to be able to you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a hot opportunity to look like you don't know what you're talking about. To it, look like y'all, the whole restaurant doesn't know what they're talking about. It's plus three, minus three. It's not just like a there's smaller mistakes that have less ramifications and mm-hmm. cost longer time to do. That one's a short duration for a big swing, you know what I'm saying? You gotta yeah. know your shit. Yeah. So it's like that that preparation I think is like it's, it's crucial. Yeah. It's crucial, but I do like to restock. <laughs> yeah, well, dude, I was about to say the best people, the best people. So, like, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys here. This is like, if you guys want to follow my coaching tree, this is one of the branches of my coaching tree. Legit, is that like, I think at one point you said like preparation is the best uh, something. Like, uh, there's like a thought theory that's like that would say preparation trumps freestyling for sure. But mm-hmm. like something that the be- what's better than anything that's the best is a nuanced version of that thing. So if you can be a preparation first player that has the capaci- capacity to freestyle, like and you actually embody both branches well, like you have a main branch that has the proper spiraling of this branch that they both flourish, you're nasty. Nasty, dog. <laughs> nasty, nasty. Bro. Like that's how you end up. And then yes, the, the best. That's it. That's sorry, it. Bro. Go on. The, those are, the best coaches are like that too. It's like yeah. their principality first, and then they're they're nuanced with their second. So like Andy reads like um really uh like his air raid offense and like his um. I guess like attention to detail as far as the routes that they're running against what concepts and like the film diligence that he does as far as being like um, a really tight play caller Mm -hmm. so that they're always calling like the right route formations into the right coverages that gives Patrick Mahomes like the best Best opportunity. Exactly. Like he's so good at that. But and that's what helps Patrick Mahomes be so good at like what he's at that's a whole different principle in my coaching tree is like they're perfectly paired up to be more nuanced in their relationship with each other Mm. but like alone with andy Reid, the thing that i think makes his like 
tree really nuanced with Patrick Mahomes is that he has all the creativity. Like he has one day a week where they come up with their own plays. When Patrick is like, okay, I drew, I drew this one up because I've seen this and this, and I think if we did this thing, like, I think if he if he ran this way instead of this way, or the, he did this and this, this would open up this way. Yes, from what I've seen, literally. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then like they have one day where they're all in pads, like doing that, like they're on, and they're like, all right, let's run it. Yeah. And then they run it, and then they see like this. Andy Reid doesn't like take Patrick Mahomes as like knowing anything. He's like he's a fucking kid. He's like twenty four. Yeah, this guy's like a fifty year old fucking the best in the league, literally the best at what he does. But like because he's so like tight with his play calling, and he nuances it with like just asking the quarterback to freestyle with mm-hmm. like what have you been seeing lately? That's why they do some of the silly plays they're doing. Is because he's like, all right, let's just throw it in there. Fuck it. Yeah. And like I think that's what makes him transcendently good. Yes. That's why the Chiefs are like top of the league good. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. I think it's like. I think metaphorically, it's like uh, you need to have the fundamentals of like the good line work to draw like a great picture, but like you need to have the creativity of the color to like fucking make it pop. You know what I'm saying, dude? The problem is, is that everybody wants to be swag with no structure. Everyone wants to be colored with no lines, <laughs> dog. <laughs> Come on, dude. So you don't want to tell a young kid like one day that will make you great, but right now it's destroying you. Like mm. you need discipline for me was like the lines that i needed to make my like uh artfulness work those discipline lines are thick dog (laughs) (laughs) dude they're more yeah i almost have a better relationship with the discipline sometimes than the art because it's like i had to win the discipline over to even have a chance with the art Mm -hmm. so like i'm Mm -hmm. really close to the discipline every day and then one day a week i get to be creative and that's more my personality is lined up with being creative but i just haven't done it in a week so i gotta like coax it out of me almost and like draw like make some coffee like listen to some music i like like really feel good and really like get that creative juice flowing yeah whereas discipline is just wake up and i'm ready to go these days you know (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. that is it's crazy they're like i love that that's another like great metaphor about it and like uh like to have your own routine to kind of like to ritual yourself like to have that creative freedom to get to routine yourself into or to rain dance yourself into whatever you need to do or whatever you want to do however you want to spend your time but then also the dis- the discipline side of the coin is like no matter how you're feeling you're gonna do this fucking shit. You know what I'm saying there's like I'm doing this shit no matter how I feel, and then there's like how do I want to exist or how do I want to make myself feel if I could do anything? Mm. You know what I'm saying yeah. But it's like most of the time I have to do this shit, but like if I could do anything, what would I do? You know, yeah. In my creative freedom of whatever. Yeah. And like marrying those two things, having the discipline and the freedom and the. The rigidity and the structure at the same time. That's better than just what 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 usually gets presented to you is like um like preparation is king, or like uh, um it's usually something really hard and it's like no one it's not sexy it's like a routine or like trust the process. Mm. It's always like a really hard sentiment, but then it's like don't because you don't want to tell the kids that the the flair or like reintegrating the creativity once you have the structure is what's going to make you transcendently great but it just kind of gets thrown out the window because at first you just need kids to be on time you just need to show up Mm -hmm. you need them to not be showboating you need them to be like to kind of like bring it in a little bit the fundamentals yeah and it's tough to be like you're you're so out here it's like come here and then like lightly let that part out of you like in the right times when it's like proper you know what i'm saying and yes. It's just like uh we're so emotionally charged, I think, when we're kids, you're like, Whoa, whoa. Like, yeah. or, like I don't know. It's just hard. even now we're emotionally time like emotionally charged now. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> Yeah. It's absolutely. Just, Some people are just emotional or we are emotional creatures. And then I guess as you grow up, you just kinda of tame that a little bit. Maybe you're kind of more sophisticated and you kinda of round it out, you round out your edges, hopefully. I think we mature somehow. And you mature a little bit, you get more emotionally intelligent, right? You get better at handling your own emotions and being being able to handle your own emotions in regard to people not being able to handle their emotions. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like ah, I'm not going to, oh, wait, you're just tripping. So I'm not going to let you make me, or you know what I'm saying? We've become like a social that. creature in that sense where it's mm-hmm. not only you and you, it's you and everybody. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot what we were talking about. Uh, how we're just like, um, we're emotionally charged people oh, just yeah. like by nature. Yeah. And I guess kids are just emotionally, we're all emotionally charged, but the, I guess kids don't have as, don't, haven't had as long of enough time to develop that emotional maturity. So it's just more. Of course not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> And then I guess some people just don't ever, you know, yeah. or like 
it don't happens. do it properly or don't do it very well for very long. I mean, we're all trying to learn so much, man. Like it's just gonna get to a point where you are our age and there's still something you need, you need to learn. Like mm -hmm. obviously, you know what I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying. Yeah, I think it's part of the game. I think at every age, like I don't think we're ever gonna run out of shit to do. I mean, you better feel really good about where you're at if you feel like you got nothing else to pick yep. up. <laughs> Talking it all. <laughs> Done. I don't know if I'll ever feel that good about everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's always something else. 100%. Never a finish line. I think but David, David Gaga stops. One playing. of the nice things about the way we've grown up is we are getting closer. We mm -hmm. are putting more, like, abstract skill sets into our bag to help us become, like, more refined and better people. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, on that ladder that you were talking about when you said – uh Man, it's like your ability to have your structure and then have your creativity. And then like I feel like I was like started where we were talking about the bottom ladder. Just like a lot of creati creativity, no structure. A lot of natural skill set, no honing in. A lot of like uh, wanting to be clutch, but in reality just shooting a lot of last second shots. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like doesn't make you clutch if you're always ball hogging the last shot and you mm. make some of them. Mm. Like uh, I started with that and then – I applied discipline and structure. And then I was like, okay, this, this will fucking take you somewhere. <laughs> this will get the people going. <laughs> yeah, this will make some shit happen. Yeah. But then like, I also came to realize through like someone, like someone I really looked up to a mentor is a manager at Saltgrass, Josh, um, someone who embodied too much of that with mm. like none of like the next phase mm. and people, not only did they hate him, I'm kind of okay with being hated in public. Like, I mean, Jesus was hated by a lot of people. I'm not saying Thanks. Josh was like Jesus or that I'm like Jesus. But what I'm saying is like hating someone doesn't necessarily make me make dis a bad person. No. Nah. Or make me dislike the way they choose to be either. Yes. And like I like the way he chose to be. I like respected it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I got along with him because I was a, along the same lines yeah. at that point in my life. But his story did not work out well for him. Mm -hmm. Like ultimately, like I think I fired or like. Ended up having to come back and serve for a while, trying to come and get his old position back. And then that didn't work out for him either. Like, Really? Shit was terrible. Yeah. What? And he was, like, good at it. I thought he was, like, a good manager for real. But yeah. it, like, just shoot him up and spit him out. Just the society. The society. The culture. The culture just chewed him up because it was, ah, oh, it was too much. He was just hard on people. It was too much. What was the, the pastor talking about? Too, too much, much truth. truth not, not enough, enough grace. Yeah. Not enough grace. Same, same, kind of, same kind of sentiment. Too much structure, not enough freedom. Not enough creativity. It is a balance. It's, it's, but I, yeah, I also, I know who you're talking about because I also worked with him for, for yeah, a stay. Yeah, right. Yeah, and like, yeah, I got along with him as well because it was like, we're, we're I, I, I come from that same cloth. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> that structure cloth is clutch. Dude, and then the other part that I'm thinking is like, the people that we look up to, they have to have a lot more discipline and structure than what we demand of the people around us. And what we're demanding of the people around us sometimes is like overwhelming for them. And in my mind, I'm mm. like, look, nobody I know is really successful. Nobody you know is really successful. In this moment, we're aiming to be really successful. So the amount of discipline I'm asking you to apply, you probably haven't seen it before. Like, no, no one's probably asking anybody around you to be this disciplined. But I'm asking you to be that disciplined in this moment. And sometimes that's just like showing up to work on time, bro. Or like yeah. cleaning up after yourself. But like, can you, can you just – it's like – I guess it's like – over the course of 14 days, you've only done that well two times. Yeah. It's like, so I understand that maybe like I'm right now, it feels like I'm asking the world of like harshness and discipline out of you. But like in reality, like the, the, the amount of discipline that I aspire to have is so much greater. It's ridiculous. So I almost don't really have time for this. And then also like in this moment, just like do it with me. Just like be on board for it. It's the it's for the embetterment of all of us because nobody is yeah. as successful as the discipline that I'm calling. I'm like – Successful people have this much discipline. Let's try to be successful. Come on. Like, get it. Let's get out of here. Mm. But, like, everyone's like, I'm at work. What? <laughs> this isn't the finals. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, it's a real juxtaposition. And, and that thing chewed Josh up and spit him out. Yeah. So you do have to have some, like, grace or creative flair. You got to, like, pepper that steak with some shit that people will like. And, mm. like, that, I'm, I'm, like, learning that face. But, like, yeah the between those two with, with the relationship with myself i already do that really well like i'm really disciplined but i reward myself too like i'm really harsh on myself but i love myself a lot too and i feel like i do it in good proportion like um for the most part i need to be disciplined with myself and then when it's the right time and it feels good and it's like uh i just like know 
it's cool to like take care of me, then like I just take care of me. I don't know how to like it feels selfish to even say it out loud to you guys. Mm. But that just looks like I don't know, man, like um not really sometimes it's buying stuff, but like not even really like buying stuff, just like uh cutting time out for myself. Yeah. Where I put down all the obligations. Yeah, give yourself yeah, free time. Yeah, I give myself space from everything. Mm -hmm. And no obligations. None. And I line it all up so it's like good. It's not like I'm turning away obligations. It's just yeah. like I could have budgeted something that you would call more beneficial for me there. I could have used that time to like learn more Spanish or like do more push-ups or more crunches or like, you know, any kind of like fine-tuning, yeah. you know what I'm saying, on myself. Uh -huh. But instead, I'm just going to like sit here and think and just like watch TV or like read stupid articles. Like I'm not pushing the P right then. And uh, yeah, I was letting myself be. Yes. But I don't always give that grace to like other people when I'm like being like demanding of them. Mm. And so that's like the like the like the pastor was talking about in church, truth and grace structure. Yeah. And then the thing that I'm learning now between that is like it feels like it's in between those things. And it's like how you how you interact with other people is like you can think and be because you have to be in your own story. You have to be who you want to be. And you have to act how you want to act because you're going to have to deal with your karma. And yeah. then one day, once you have your karma, you're going to say to yourself, well, I wish I wasn't this way. <laughs> and then it's going to be like, dude, like you had the opportunity to be however you wanted to be. Yeah. So right now, like I feel that obligation to be how – what I think someone should act like, even if I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to be what I, how I want someone to act, which is like more disciplined than I started with or maybe more confrontational than – I would necessarily like sometimes. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think that's spot on. I think I've conceptualized that with the idea of uh, trying to act or treat yourself as if you're like your own child to a degree. You know, like if you were your, how would I want my child to act? How would I want my child to hold themselves? How would I want them to behave in these situations? Whatever. That idea is like yeah, that's what and I'm embody that. <laughs> yes, bro, that's hard to do. That's like a whole thing, right? Yeah. So like I spent like time trying to do that part, but then that part doesn't necessarily. Like I said, I respected Josh for who he was and who he chose to be. But his social interactions were terrible for him. Like, nobody liked him. Like, he didn't have enough nuance in his personality to still be friends with people. Hmm. And, like, I don't necessarily want to be everybody's friend. Like, I don't, actually. That's too many friends. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Right? So, like, mm -hmm. it's okay if some people don't like me, per se. Or at least they're net neutral enough to not really be, like, in my circle. That's cool. But, like... When I am with the people like Derek and Jordan and you and, like, my people that are in my core, like, I do want to be – have enough, like, man, like, what's making those social interaction and those engagements so enriching in that moment is because we're we're all kind of, like, well-socialized individuals. Like, we've got structure and creativity and we know how to, like, I don't know, just, like, have conversations that are, like – I don't want to say, like, high-level conversations because that sounds kind of, like, weird, but, like – uh like deeper nuanced, like the jokes are a little funnier. The the, yeah, the yeah. sayings hit a little better. He's got a little more swag when he talks. I'm like, damn, motherfucker, these are some high resolution people. Like <laughs> they're really like becoming this nice, like, I don't know, man. Like, mm -hmm. but it would require all of that like work of like when Derek's talking about how having his baby changed him, I'm like, that's why talking to you right now is so like full. Like this meal is so like you got everything here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got the potatoes. You got the collard greens. You got some mixed veggies. And like, so then when I, I obviously value that because when I'm seeing my friends present that, it's like making me want to cry almost. I'm like, yo, we're fucking that. You're, you're a person, bro. And then like, <laughs> come back. Person, bro. <laughs> Come back to my film room. Actualized. Yeah. And in my own film room, I think it looks like figuring out how to do those things in your everyday life so that when you get in that social interaction, like you are that recipe. Mm -hmm. Like that is your – you're just bringing a shot of the you you've been brewing to the table. And then you that – there's no – the upper limits of how good that drink can be when you share it with your friends in that moment. It's like, yeah. man. That you brew. Yeah, I touched it a little bit yesterday. I was like, man, I want to – I want to come back to these tables and just be like a more sophisticated, enriched, like pleasant dish for you guys to enjoy every time <laughs> I come, you know? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I feel it 100%. Yeah. Man, I was going to say something. In Please to do. That. Sorry. I was deep no, in there. I, I, I forgot what it was. I was losing it. They were talking about. Oh, yeah. Because it's funny that 
Derek had mentioned that sentiment of yeah him, him having his child kind of changed his life, and we had also mentioned that sentiment like on our podcast as well a couple of days ago or whatever. Yeah, whenever we're talking about that, because yeah, it does. You know, he's like something happened, man. Something, I don't fucking know. Something happened. Like I know, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, bro. Right. right? It's crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't necessarily want to have a baby when I see that. But it's like I, I take in the thing. Like I'm like, that's beautiful. And I do yes. I do maybe like want to go through that growth someday. But I also can see like God deals different people with different cards at different times for different lives. Like it's different books. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like it's crazy. I'm like, oh shit, that's happening in your life right now and it's taking you to this place and like you've become this person. Like you're crazy. You're awesome. Like I love you. It's, it's mm. nuts, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I think that's playing. I think that's playing the game of life well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Continuing this, doing your experience thing. Just keep on going. It's stable. It's solid. It looks good. You got a baby on the way. Your name's gonna keep going. Bunch You're of. You're passing dogs. on your wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> You're passing on all the all the all the things that you've learned. It's crazy, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. Life's good. It's going fast. It's going fast. It's so cliche, but yeah, it happens. I think when I'm thinking cherish about it. why that's so important, cherish it, cherish it, <laughs> please cherish it. <laughs> For real, you can be you can be dead tomorrow, man. For real. I was thinking about that sentiment, and yeah, it just felt like I got to another level with people say like, uh, "You won't be, you know, every day could be your last day." It's like we can't really live like that, but you do have to live <laughs> with some conceptualization. Yeah, it's like no responsibilities, <laughs> end of the world, motherfucker. <laughs> so max out these credit cards. <laughs> How are they going to collect from a dead guy? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> on his gravestone. Got him. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it on my tab. It's on his gravestone. <laughs> but no, you no gotta, that's you funny. You it. <laughs> that's funny. Yo, yeah, no, but so you can't live like that, but you do have to, I think, integrate that idea into into your you Mm -hmm. that you know you you could be i saw a guy on instagram you might have seen it talking about if someone had told kobe hey you're gonna get out you're gonna die in two weeks oh yeah yeah. how would he live two weeks and then one week and then he's like you're dying tomorrow what do you think like how lined up with what kobe would have done knowing that knowledge versus what kobe did knowing that knowledge how lined up with was he with what he did and that that clicked it into place for me because i was like It's probably not a hundred percent. It's probably not a hundred percent. Like he, he probably would have gone to Italy or some shit. Yeah, because I guess part of what we're doing here is we have to kind of take the, the future into consideration. That kind of determines what we're doing here to some degree. If you're thinking about this whole life thing, if you're trying to reap what you sow, you're like that would determine, you know, because we are kind of living with a deep, maybe not default, but maybe we kind of take for granted or do think project into the future. Right. Right. So like I do. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. That's the part of working out is that thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like the behavior of working out is like future preventative to some degree. Mm-hmm. And it's also like I'm going to have to look at me tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? And the next day, and the next day. And like the formula for dealing mm-hmm, with that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is like deal with it once a day. Once a day so that every day is a good like you have the consequence you want every day. Yeah. But it's 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 like you have to look at it from this angle to this angle to this angle to come to the realization that the only thing you can do is prepare every day. And I think Kobe was at that place where he – I think he might have wanted to prepare every day because it's like even though I'm going to die, I don't want to be on dead day and be a weird version of me, an unprepared version of me. Like I think you would still pay your taxes even if you knew you were going to die in two weeks mm. if you're as actualized as I'm talking about. Mm. And for instance, like, I think I would work out all 14 of those days or yeah, I would actually, (laughs) I wouldn't take a single of those days off. I love the gym. Yeah. I'd pay a little extra taxes. (laughs) Yeah. I love going to the gym. It's one of my favorite things to do. When you have that perspective of like, you know, it's like Mm. some people are like, they're sick. They're sick. They're sick pups. Sick. You definitely go to the gym if you knew you were going to die that day. Like, but your answer is kind of like, absolutely. Right. I think so. Right. Okay, that's crazy, but I think that's in line with the the truer alignment of how would you live your life if you knew you could die tomorrow. It's like you're kind of doing it right now. Mm-hmm. As, as every day you get up and work out, you're living like you were going to die that day. If yeah. you really think about how you'd want to be. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. 
That's yeah. crazy, right? You're fucking me up. Hold on, I'm out. <laughs> that was it. You threw me in and threw me out. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. I think some people are like, I would get drunk on a beach. Yeah, because yeah, my, my thought is that yeah, some people would be thinking like, all right, you're gonna die tomorrow. I was like, fuck this, I'm going to Jamaica or whatever, right? Part of margaritas is the, on the beach for sure, right? For sure, I might do that too. <laughs> after, I, after I work out <laughs> yeah exactly exactly that's the thing dude it's like i would still pay my taxes crazy so that's what i'm saying mm -hmm, kobe mm -hmm. probably wasn't a hundred percent lined up with like how he would have lived his last two weeks knowing he would have died at the end of those two weeks mm -hmm. but i think some of it was lined up yeah like maybe 76 percent is the number it's the figure i'm drawing out of Something. my ai computer is like yeah i think he would have taken a couple more trips and he might have had sex a couple more times with his wife but other than that i think he probably was right there yeah and that's how like i aspire to be is like yeah i, th I feel that or because i think that aligns with the sentiment i think i've expre expressed to you before of like if god takes me tomorrow then i'm good dog you know what i'm saying it's like i'm fine <sighs> like, I've, I've had a hell of a ride to some degree it's like i haven't i haven't accomplished anything that i want to accomplish or not not anything but i haven't accomplished the things that i want to accomplish but like i'm i'm i'm, I'm good you know what i'm saying like I'm, I'm i think we're all right yeah yeah I put in a at the end of the life. All you want to say is like I put in a fucking hell of a work. Yeah, I put in some fucking work. I put in yeah. I, I put in my alert. I, I did my shit. I did my thing. I, I squeezed out all of my life experience. Had the highs, the lows, some sad times. I cried. I laughed. A lot of laughter. Enjoyed it. A lot of hard work. A lot of sweat. A lot of frustration. A lot of figuring things out. But it was a good run. Great run. It's a good run. That's all you. What else? What else you want to say, man? Tried your hardest. Let's leave it I all. I left it all out there, yeah, man. That, I left it all out there. Fuck yeah. yeah that, fuck yeah. That's it, bro. Yeah, that is, bro. That's, that's it. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Yeah. That's why you can hang a hat on that thing. Hang a hat on that. <laughs> that's it. Like, For real. No, nah, so there's that. But then uh, one thing that I wanted to like couple couple with that is, or like the other sentiment, the other side of that coin is like, like that's, um, I also want to be like, you're, you, and you touch a lot of people every day. So you got to do these things right here. But like, especially if you're like a dad or like in, in like a nuclear family family household, you definitely touch like a lot of people every day in an influential way. So I think having that nuanced like personality integrated into like where you're having these positive social interactions, where you're bringing this like shot of you to these interactions and that shot of you is like delicious. Like the problem is, is that mm -hmm. like it can become a really negative thing if you're not like trying to bring your best self to the table every time because these people like look up to you and they like love you and your relationship impacts them. It means a lot to them. So I think part of the reason it makes me want to cry whenever I'm seeing like my homies just like really like becoming the sophisticated version of themselves. That's like, and I'm not saying sophisticated, like high British tea time. I just mean <laughs> like they're becoming a real nuance. Like th their thoughts are deeper. Like you ask them what they think about something and they bring something, they say something that's like really, uh, not surface level. It's like a good point. Good points are hard to come by, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're like, damn. You feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, you can really feel that. Yeah. And like just to to get that out of like, you know, someone you love I think is really valuable. I think it's like – I think that's why it sits on my heart so heavy. I don't know if I mm -hmm. care so much. It might be – like I see a fast car and I'm like, it's, it's, a, it's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool. That's neat. And like seeing my friend be – sophisticated is not just cool it's not even like whoa it's like oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's different bro yeah, it's, your, it's your soul bro yeah man it's an it's enriching it's enriching yeah so i, I guess I, I, pursuing that is worthwhile in yes. my opinion fucking right especially if we got to integrate behaviors that are like we're gonna die soon you know what i'm saying that somehow like that factors in too mm -hmm. we have to be here we're here yeah we're here, we're here until we're not so true it's like what the hell are you gonna do what are you gonna do? So true. Yeah, man. Try to become that most nuanced, fully realized, actualized version of yourself. That's what we're about. That's it. That's that's the brand. <laughs> that's it. That's MJ thirty eight. Yeah. That's what all the music's about. Like, mm -hmm. it's all perspective from the pursuit of that. Yes. Like someone asked me something about. What I thought about something religious idea wise, and I was just like, oh, blah, 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 blah. well, I'm coming, from the, I'm coming from the perspective of like trying to become sanctified. It's like that's a big part of like my religious cornerstone is like I'd like to become sanctified by the hopefully on this journey. Hopefully I hit a point where like I'm sanctified and then like that's the end of like my not the end of my personal salvation per se, but it's just like 
that's like the goal that I hope to reach. And then if I still have some time left on the table, like I'd like to be a sanctified person in other people's lives. And I can just like be there for them if they need it in whatever capacity. Mm -hmm. But like, I think sanctified and actualized are like similar words as like what we're in the pursuit of right here is like um, becoming that truly final form of yourself, like the most beautiful piece of art that you were ever able to become. Like whatever, it, I believe in God. So whatever like God saw for you whenever he made you, like this version of yourself, that would be like the highest frequency you could attain. I don't know. There's like, I could use any words to describe like the, the best version of you. Yeah. But it's just like, I don't know if we'll ever get there, but I think like Jordan Peterson talks about being in a process is sometimes more important than like actually receiving the end result. It's mm -hmm. so, like pursuing that thing is almost more valuable than ever getting it. Common cliche. Right. Well, fuck. Or, the, or like the, uh, the journey, it is. The, the journey's more, <laughs> more, or whatever. The journey's more important than the, the destination. So true. Or it's true that it's a cliche is what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. And people, yeah. And people hate to hear it. Russ has a, I think Russ has a, a line about that. Or he's like, uh, the best part of getting, oh, wait, no. How's, how's he say it? Something about getting there is the best part of getting there. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're trying to, we're trying to get to this, like, trying to gain popularity in, in music or whatever you're trying to do. You're trying to, you're trying to achieve this thing. It's like the process of getting to that thing is the enjoyable part because you're going to get that thing. And Drake, Drake mentions it too. And uh, I forget how he mentions it, but it's like, uh, Whenever you have uh, the, the the process and the pursuit and that motivation of actually seeing progress towards that goal is more more fulfilling than the actual attaining of the goal. I forget how he says it exactly, but th that's the sentiment he's expressing. And yeah, it's the the journey's more more valuable. It's like the last the last chapter of the book is not not the best chapter of the book. That was hard. No, you, you, I'm <laughs> fucked up, dude. <laughs> I, I, I just want to run you back 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah, everyone else, you can. My response is coming. <laughs> no, I think... Um, the best part of getting there is getting there. You know what? Russ said that really hard. That's really hard. Mm. Nice bars. Way to do it. It's not sexy. You like, don't want to hear it. Even hearing you talk, I'm like... <sighs> <It's> like what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but it's just... Yeah, it's I because have to take my own advice sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We're just like spinning out this, like we're, we're sitting in this truth spot, and then I'm just like living life. I'm just like, oh yeah, I did say that thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is how I how how I how I tell people to handle these things. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think what it's like. What does that mean? It's like where do you enjoy it then? If the best part is the journey, it's like where's the enjoyment come out of? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I guess winning the Super Bowl probably probably feels fucking awesome. It feels way better than that week seven loss. I think. <laughs> I think Patty Mahomes felt incredible when he was holding up that trophy. Right. right? Let's be honest. Yes. Right? I'm sure he felt way better then than he did when they lost whenever the fuck they lost. To the Colts. Yeah, whenever the hell that was. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sure, dude. Um, I guess it doesn't stop, though. I don't know. Because then the, the next season's coming, too. There's mo I don't know. I think there's moments that... You need to be able to celebrate, right? Yeah. I think that's important. It is. Because people don't that don't celebrate end up telling you we should have celebrated our wins. So yeah, we gotta celebrate wins. So we reward the the neurons that worked so hard to get it. That's another part. Yeah. And yeah, also, yeah. also if you lie to yourself, then you don't trust yourself. Mm. And so if you're like we're working hard for a reward, and then the reward never comes, then like subconsciously you don't trust yourself, and then you don't work as hard for yourself. Mm. But if the relationship is tighter, and you know you take care of you, then like in the cut in the moment where you're demanding that you squat that weight. And you're telling yourself it's worth it to squat that weight, but your you doesn't trust you that your things that you say are worth it are worth it. Why should I listen to you? I, I, I'm going to fail. Mm -hmm. Like, I think I think it is – Jordan. I got that from Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And I think it's true because there's times where I do shit that I'm like, that was a bigger gap of I didn't think we could do that than I've ever jumped before. It's like I definitely thought I was going to fail and somehow we did two more reps. And I don't know where that came from other than being – it was like gut. It was like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> And there was just more of me there, you know? Uh -huh. And I think that was, like, part of it's the relationship with myself. That, like, I tell myself it's worth it, and then myself my, myself will pursue it harder for me. Mm. Yeah, that's important as hell. But if you don't celebrate those wins, then that relationship becomes disrupted. Because then you think, like, your subconscious is like, fuck this guy. Like, yeah. You don't even take care of me. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And so, yes, we got to celebrate wins, and they feel fucking incredible. Yeah, especially when you win. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you When you dub... I think uh, it's also a fine line or like you can't be living in the glory days, but you have to 
fucking pat yourself on the back. Okay, let's go. Throw that in the cookie jar. That, that's, what, that's what happens. You celebrate it. You recognize it. You catalog it. You archive it. And then you <laughs> fucking keep working. And then you look back on it whenever you doubt yourself in the future. Yes. And, that, and, and you don't do that often. Make that a rare moment where you're mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm going to go look at my cookie jar now. Like, yeah. I need it now. And then, yeah, I bet that I could see the Super Bowl 50 MVP. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm a dog. Yeah. I'm a dog. <laughs> That's a good cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, for real. And then, mm-hmm. and then you, I, I felt it before. I've gone into my own cookie jar and been like, man, I ran a fucking marathon, to be honest with everybody here. I've, I've run 26 <laughs> nonstop. Some shit, dog. Let's go. Yeah. So, like, That's my guy. This being like a long shift, like, I'm done feeling that. Like, I'm done feeling that. Like, I've done harder things than this. Yes. And then that state change. Like, state change. Boom. And then I finished strong. Yeah. And, like, that shit's important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I think it's, like, uh, yeah, then because then you get – not only does winning happen and that feels great, but then you get the cookie for later. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to help you win more later. Yes. That's tight. More be getting more, dog. That's tight. Fuck. That's how Beto. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. I don't know. Sometimes I think about, we're talking about why is the journey valuable though? Why is that like the 99% more valuable than the 1%? That sounds so great right now. It sounds wonderful. I'm <laughs> talking about I it. I want to win the Super Bowl. I want Super Bowl cookies I can touch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, um, mm. I guess maybe the journey is the, I forget how Drake expresses it. I think, I think Drake kind of touches on that. I think maybe it's just the, uh, I think maybe the way he expresses it is that like the positive, the positive chemicals and the positive emotion that you feel towards the progress is more, will add up more over, those are more valuable. Those feel better than actually getting to the thing. But I guess, I don't know. We're just talking about Super Bowl wins. <laughs> That's a little different. Uh, no, no. I'm with you. The, a thought brushed up on my brain while you were saying that that was like, um, maybe when you get there too and you actually do win. And maybe you have to, have to deserve to win. I know that that is true in my own metaphysical books I feel like you have to think you deserve to win otherwise sometimes you'll like not like we'll talk about hitting a game winning three like shooting with that proper form having like the confidence to be calm like I think you have to believe that this is right Mm. or you won't act like proper you'll be shaky you'll be like a and also just like the way truth is like outside the curtain of us just the way truth is is like not that you have to deserve to win but like to some degree like Karma plays out. Karma is karma. Yeah. Yeah. But that coupled with, okay, let's say you do win. But then, like, part of it is you're the champion. You're the MVP. And you're looking at everybody else on the field. Like, what makes you feel like you deserve that? Because it's going to mm. feel weird. Mm-hmm. Unless you worked, like, harder than everybody else in your own mind to some degree. Unless you can, like, draw back the the whole journey and you can remember all the times you almost quit and you didn't. And you remember, like... The body of work that it took to become a champion, like then all of a sudden you probably appreciate the body of work like more than the actual win itself in that moment because it's got to feel weird to be like at the top. Yeah, you know. Yeah, because I was just I was just thinking about it from the perspective of like Patty Mahomes, like you know, what I'm saying like uh, I don't know. It probably felt bad like that. The losses during the season probably felt bad, but they I, I bet that he was able to learn more from those losses or be, be able to like they were I bet guarantee he's like they were worth it. All that was worth it. That whole season, everything was worth it. Because of this. All the lows. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you, even if you don't win, the whole season was worth it. I grew so much. Yeah. Yeah. The growth is the valuable thing. The growth. Yeah. yeah that's what it is. Because. Yeah. Because you you can't win if you don't grow anyways. Like, you can't, like, he had to grow a lot to be at the point where he could be that thing. So he probably just appreciates the growth, especially in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, thank God I went through all that shit. You know what I'm saying? And maybe it's, like, also, hold on, I'm getting there. Maybe it's, like, with a plant, you're watching a plant grow, and it's, like, you plant the plant, and you water, you're taking care of it, and then you're checking on it every day, every week. And it's, like, like, whenever it sprouts, you're, like, oh, shit, it's exciting. And then, like, it grows, and it grows, and grows, and grows. And, like, every time you check in and there's more growth, it's, like, more exciting, more exciting. And then whenever it blossoms, it's like, oh, yes, it fucking did it. I love it. It's awesome. But then time continues. So then it's like at that point, there's no more growth happening. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so it's not as exciting anymore. Or you know what I'm saying? There's no more progress. There's no visual progress. There's nothing to excite you in the day-to-day anymore. It's like taking care of the plant is just taking care of the plant now. And it's like get to appreciate the beauty. Like almost at this point, all that you can do is depreciate the beauty. 
Unless you're just like, you're fucking on it and like you really do love this plant. You know what I'm saying? You tell that plant to become a tree. <laughs> you, you can't tell a plant to become a tree, but you fuck, that's it, right? dude. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, oh, I don't, I'm not saying that that's it, but that's a scary truth. There's something truth. in there. there. There's a truth in there. And it's mm. kind of scary. Because like, I think probably women feel like that about their beauty to some degree. There's mm. a lot of things that it's like, you're going to get to a point where like, this is the pinnacle of the existence of that thing. Or like the Super Bowl. We just want a Super Bowl. This is it. Mm. So it's like from this point, it's all downhill. Yeah. People, that's a scary thing. If you ever think life is going to be downhill from you at any point, that's like scary, right? Yeah. But I think like we as humans, we can like reframe ourselves to be like, uh, to take a bigger goal at mind. But I don't know about Patrick Mahomes. What bigger goal can you have? That's great. Like <laughs> now, he's, now he's thinking goat talk. Yeah. Yeah. He's got to be on goat talk for sure. Mm. Yeah. See, yeah, there's that. But then like. Spans time. Yeah. I, I was thinking he could be like a, eventually be like a head coach and an owner. And just like, that's kind of the Thomas Shelby problem too, is like, how do you like set the frame bigger? It's like, okay, yeah. we're here. It's like, now how do we set the frame bigger? Bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that that's. That is Peaky Blinders for real. <laughs> yeah, you know? And like, that's tight. Like, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's cool. That's expansion. Like, I hear yeah. you rap about expansion. I'm like, that's what that is. Mm. And like, uh, we are, we're going on that trajectory. So I think like trying to, Learn from Drake or Patrick Mahomes sounds kind of like lofty, but like the expansion, like the mm. thing that they do in that regard, like I, I think we're on the trajectory to do, to do that. So it makes sense to me personally. And I also want to make sense of that because people will throw that at you like uh, the journey is better than the, the dub. And it's it's always just like a what? Like shut up moment or not. Like I remember being an immature little kid and definitely felt like that. I'm a little better about it now. I, I fucking am learning patience to combat that. And like all yeah. of, kind of all this we're talking about, I'm like, oh, I actually just want to refer to my patience that I'm working on because it makes it easier. It's just That's like the thing. Yeah. It, it, it's like acceptance. Like I don't even, yes. even want to yes. think about the Super Bowl. Like I don't want to think about the journey. I don't want to have to hear a sentiment about how this is all OK. It's like I just want like I'm OK. I accept this. Mm-hmm. That acceptance kind of like sparks something. Yeah, maybe that's better. Yeah. Acceptance. I think it's in line with uh, the word, the other word you used to describe it. Yeah. Oh, patience. Yeah. Yeah. Patience is like accepting the, accepting the is. Yeah. Which is important. Very important. Super important. <laughs> you don't want to go against the is. You, you'll lose every time. <laughs> it's so funny how <laughs> we know that so well, but yeah, it's, mm. it's just true. That's in our coaching tree. It's like, if you go against the is long enough or like the is and amnes are like terms we use to describe like true reality, like what's actually going on here. Yeah, like right here, right now. Objectively, outside of everyone's perspective, like what's actually happening, if you go like against that too long or your perception of reality is like not in line with that for too long, you will have negative circumstantial fallout. Yeah. It's like some pushback. It's math. <laughs> <laughs> it's string theory math, but it's math. Yeah. Those noodles will fling back on you. For real. And then so it's patience is Kind of sometimes I guess we yeah we don't want to accept that we haven't made it yet or that we're in the position that we're in, or that like I want life to look like this and it currently looks like this, hmm. and then you could be like, patience just makes it not feel so bad. You just like accept it and then take a, take away the power to have negative emotion attached to that. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of mental things you can think about that make it not so bad right now, if you go to that place with it instead of being like frustrated about it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's like kind of your blessings, you know what I'm saying, to a degree. It's like, oh, shit, I'm all healthy. I'm good. My body's fine. I'm not injured. I'm not sick. It's like, shit, that's good right there, dog. Like, <laughs> that's enough for some people. It's like, shit. Yeah, people tell real. me that all the time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, but I want what I want. <laughs> but they're right. They're right. I mean, it's both. It's this nuance, like. It is nuanced. It's, yeah. it's nuanced. It's nuanced because, I don't know. Yeah, what the hell else? Like, desire is not a bad thing. It's not. I don't think pa- it's a bad thing. Desire is linked to passion. Passion's a really great thing in my mind. Yeah, if it, if it truly comes from within like that. Yeah. I think it was given to you by God or given to you from somewhere else. You didn't choose it. You know what I'm saying? If you're just like really, truly in tap with yourself, you're just like pursuing what you're interested in. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. where the hell did that come from? It's either God or the <laughs> devil. One or the other. Yeah, something. Something outside of you. Yeah, is exactly. Influencing you. It's probably either something in your flaws or it's something in your, your higher self, mm. you know? And if you have discernment to say, like, I'm interested in this, this is, like, a good thing. Like, I know this is, like, like time passes really fast when I do this. I'm, like, fascinated. Like, I think about it at night. Like, it's it's dope. Like, I'm into this. Like, you can 
that's that's from, from God, I think. Yeah. Seriously. For sure. It sounds like a dramatic statement. <laughs> but no, like genuinely. It's definitely not from you. Or like from, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you don't really have your control of your, your presets in this game and your, your preferences and your your likes and dislikes. I guess you, I think it, it may come from somewhere outside of you. I think that that's kind of what we're talking about. I think it's almost like set in stone in my mind. It's like, where, where the hell does that come from? Yeah. It's kind of, it is somewhat self-generated, but you have to kind of self-explore as well. But also I think the, the, the thing outside of you that could be influencing you, as you mentioned, could be a negative or positive force. And you have to have the ability to develop the discernment between the two. Just because, yeah, because also like, just because it feels good doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you as well. Nope. You know what I'm saying? You can't just be eating candy, motherfucking doing drugs all day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, no, not, not when you have the, see, this is where isness and amnes, when I was like, understand, truly understanding what's really going on objectively is like, it's not like, what I mean when I say that is like, time is passing mm -hmm. and we all have to accumulate for time passing. So like, that's a reality that doesn't seem like it's there on surface level. It seems like you just eat candy and do drugs all day. <laughs> Unless you, then you figure out time is real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to deal with tomorrow and shit. Mm -hmm. It's like living, living like tomorrow's not here is going to fuck you over. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's crazy because just reality is not, when I'm, when I'm talking about reality, I'm not talking about like the matrix. I'm talking about like the reality of the situation that we're all in, that life is fucking crazy. <laughs> and that we're all like energetic beings going through time. Like that's the reality. Mm -hmm. But like people, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No. <laughs> like, I don't want to get it twisted, but I'm not talking about like reality of like water falls downward because of gravity. I'm talking about like, like people have desire. Mm. Where does that come from? We're not <laughs> sure, but you have to take it into account. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think developing the discernment between whatever forces could be drawing you into whatever is going to satisfy you in the moment. You know what I'm saying? You have to develop the discernment and the discipline to choose the one that you're like, I'm going to do act this way in this moment, even though it may not be immediately gratifying i'll sacrifice this immediate gratification for a potential hypothetical more gratifying situation that doesn't exist yet but it, it might it might come my way if i act like that in this, or whatever if i exist yeah. as a behavior yeah that's mm -hmm. vision that's yeah. fucking that's crazy mm -hmm. when you say it like that that's crazy <laughs> put it that way but yeah that's like the more nuanced behavior more in line with reality right mm. God, that's fucking genius. But the other thing about being patient, because we we're talking about patience, right? Yeah. It's like uh, if you're patient for too long, it's like not it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. If you're waiting for the right circumstances to make your move, yeah, it's not. That's not it. Analysis. Yeah, that's doing bad. Doing the research, running the numbers again. For sure. If you, you take some action, sometimes definitely. Well, I guess I guess we were, I was referring to patience in like the waiting for action, but I guess there's also. You're already imp implementing the action, and there's like the patience of not being frustrated with the results. That's deep. Yeah, I guess it's kind of a little bit different, right? Yeah, or same, same thing. Because pa patience, when you say patience, not frustrated with the result, and then we're talking about patience mid process. Those are two different like places. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But being patient with the result is even more expanded thinking. That's long term over how many results are you going to get? Like if you're going to have 10 results and you want to be patient with this result because you want this result to look like how you want it to look mm. like that's better to go that wide with it. But I think also like as much as stuff is theory, there is like the now. So like you have to be patient in the now too. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm -hmm. To get to where you can be patient with all your your results. Yeah. Acceptance, man. Yeah. What up? <laughs> I just want to get back to what we're talking about patience. The journey. Drake, oh, Drake also expresses it in another song. I just remembered that he uh, he's like, there are times where I wish, there are times where I wish, or there are times now that I wish I was where I was back when I used to wish that I was here. Yep. You know what I'm saying? That should hit me like a shotgun in the right. chest when I heard it. You see, even when you get there, even when you get to that elevated place, you might have those days or those moments where you're like, fuck, man. I just want to go back to when shit was simple. I didn't have all these fucking problems. I didn't have all this responsibility and obligation. I'm sure. Right? I'm sure. <laughs> this complexity. Yeah. Yeah. Only at times, though. At times. I'm sure. Because also, you got to love where you're at. Yeah. I was like, I must be a kid, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but yeah, it's crazy to hear. It's powerful when you hear someone in that place actually express that. You're like, oh, shit, it is true. Legit. Yeah. Legit. Solidified. Yeah. Drake told me so. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but that, it's powerful. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And like Drake, I think, is a, a, a role model for, maybe not role model exactly, but I think he's a model of emulation or a, a good 
person that people want to equate themselves with within the music industry. If you want to be a hip hop head or if you want to be a rapper, it's like he's doing it. He's, he's winning a lot of championships. Like you want to be quarterback. You want to be like Tom Brady. OK, like Drake's probably like that in some degree, you know? Yeah. Damn, I forgot what was going with that. It's just deep because when it, when it, if, if someone asked me. Oh, but yeah, if that guy's giving you advice about being at that pinnacle, it's like who, else, who, like, who, who else would you ask? You know what I'm saying? What's it feel like to win seven championships? Who like, else? Who, who else ask? are you gonna ask? Yeah, exactly, bro. That that's why I like studying Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. They tell you stuff mm. that nobody else could really tell you with certainty. Yes. It's like they know. They've been there. Yeah, they fucking know. David Goggins, like he fucking knows. He's been there. <laughs> <laughs> He's seen some stuff. Seriously. So Promise. sometimes I reference those people and people are like, You're referencing the wrong people. I'm like, I'm referencing the right people, actually. <laughs> that's unrealistic. <laughs> it's like that's your reality, dog. <laughs> I'm looking for success. They're the people that tell us about success. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we're all looking for success, right? What, however that looks for you, however you think that would look. We all want to be... Yeah, I think, what is it, Earl Nightingale? It's one of the quotes I have in my little journal. But it's like, success is nothing more than the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So it's like, that's so up to interpretation. That's just like everyone's own, what's a worthy ideal? Just like I guess maybe there are some wrong or not wrong, but things that would be considered like not worthy ideals. We can go to war with that. <laughs> yes, we have to actually. Right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like the good and evil thing. Yeah. The whole, the whole thing. Unfortunately, they're like, yeah, evil says, yeah, we can do that. We're like, no, don't do that. How about you don't? Oh no, dude. Abel dies. That's one realization I had over the weekend. So like, Abel's just dead. Abel dies. And Cain's left with the world. So like. I don't know, man. We do have to go to war against the improper modes of being and, like, mm-hmm. the unidealistic ways, for sure. But, like, um, I think it, part of it is, too, is, like, like, Jesus died. Like, Abel died. Like, and then just, like, to, then from that perspective of, like, fighting the good fight will result in death. It's like, I don't even want to kill that. I don't want to kill that many people on the way out. I'm just going to fucking die anyways. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, it's just crazy. Like, I guess that's the part of, like, where you're supposed to be, like, a loving person is, like, the... Like, it's a war, but, like, a Christian war, like, it's fought with love. But it's, like, yeah. it's a, That's that's a difficult thing to integrate into my personality right now is, like, what I'm trying to figure out. Because I'd rather, like, just John Wick all my problems. Love grenades. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> Hug bazookas. <laughs> In the shape of hearts. I don't know. What do you want from me? <laughs> oh, I need that as a gift. But no, I think, because, yeah, I think that there's, like, a fucking... I don't know, like, maybe a stigma, but like the uh, love is the answer. But we have to be fighting these fucking. We can't just be letting worthy in the, in the battle in the fucking thought space in the in the spiritual realm of what constitutes worthy ideals. Like in those battles, like we have to battle. Like if if it fucking comes down to it, or like if I guess I'm I'm being I'm taking it to an extreme. I'm saying just like black. It could be black and white. It's just like not ra- raping. Yeah, raping and murdering people is like not okay. You know what I'm right. So it's 100%. like if people are like trying to be like, yeah, raping and murdering people is like a worthwhile idea. It's like, no, I have to fucking end you, dog. <laughs> like, there's, there's no fucking love. I'm not gonna hug you, dog. Like, I could try. I'll try my fucking best and I'll pray for you. But if it comes down to it, if it, if, if we can't leave this room until one ideal wins, then like I have to go to war on that. I'll die on that fucking hill. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if Abel dies in that fight. I Super don't know. hero. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, he'll yeah. die. Then come back. Fucking facts. Awesome shit. On dog. a dub. Yeah, awesome dub. Awesome big ha- dub. Harry Potter shit, dick. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. That's the remedy for like So that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's like there, there could be small discrepancies in what's worthy and what's not worthy, but like I'm talking about polarizing like what the fuck like, good and evil for real. Right. hundred percent. Like we can't how do we how do we love those people, you know? That's fucking hard to do, dog. I would I would rather just kill them. Right. <laughs> I mean, just like from a place of honesty. <laughs> like God sort them out, dude. That, I think fucking Chance the Rapper expresses that. Kendrick expresses that. He's like, uh, all that nonviolent shit goes out the window along with you and the rest of your team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking, I'd rather just settle like that. I don't know if that's animalistic or what, but it's like at the end of the day, it feels like, I mean, that's, it's also like in a lot of stories throughout time where like an old king has to like be killed by like a new king. It's like these ideas are like we're representing ideas and those ideas are going to war. Yes. And then like, yeah, what makes David beat Goliath? 
like God. God. <laughs> but also the idea, David's idea was right. And in that moment, that idea was going to win that war. And then yeah. like God played it out perfectly. Like it created the situation where in which the that idea is the only idea that could possibly make the circumstance fucking. Whoop. Yep. And then like that's how like life plays out going forward. And I think that like we are coming into like moments where our ideas are like gonna clash and fight like over time with other people's ideas. Mm-hmm. And then like I think especially in ancient times that looked like people fighting to the death. Hundred percent. And now it doesn't look like that so much anymore. Mm-hmm. But it also happens with like. I mean, it happens with situations and people and like, like friendship groups, like people will end up like going to war over like an idea that like they're clashing on to a head. And then sometimes that looks like one person like leaving the friend group. Yeah. Like I've seen like pe- someone has like a bad ideology and they like have negative energy on the overall vibe in the time for too long. And then somebody like addresses it and then like that person can like be better or not. But like if the idea stays, it's like I'm not doing anything wrong. It's like, no, you're doing something wrong. It's like, no, I'm not. It's like, no, yes, you are. <laughs> and it's like, if that person at that point is like, hold on, you guys all think I'm doing something wrong, but I'm not doing that thing wrong. It's like, okay, well, then I have to leave because if I don't let go of the idea, yes. like that idea would have to lose and die for like the reacceptance into like the friend group. Yes. And that happens like in work groups and friend groups and like family groups. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. that. All the time. Right. On many different fucking whatever you want to talk about. Yes, bro. Polit- politics, sports, fucking whatever. It just could be small, decisive or divisive shit, dude. Stupid it, arguments for sure. But it also could be. I like, didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't even say that. <laughs> like, yes, you did, dude. Yes, right. Yeah. You little shit. And fighting to the death doesn't have to look like swords. Sometimes fighting to the death is being like, no, we are having this confrontation right now. <laughs> This started last Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. And you've been doing this shit for nine months. Like, like that's like to the death almost. Like, that's going to be like... Uh, party is going to have to die right here. Yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes as men, I think we are called to have to take certain ideas to the, to the Coliseum. It's like, mm-hmm. nope. It's like, I just know. I just know that's how a lot of stories go where it's like the new king has to... Like, most of the time they just call out the old king. It's not like for the death but most of the time the old king just gets more tyrannical and then yeah. it's like okay it's going down you there. gotta go gots to go you gots to go i mean that's nature if you want like that's just the nature of what we're doing here you could like patty cake around it and think it doesn't have to be that but like that's nature it's how mm. trees grow and frogs turn into tadpoles or <laughs> the other way around <laughs> you know how it goes yeah but i'm saying like you can't get around that that's like objective reality like we talked about yeah so, because saying to the death is a lot but I'm like, no, on the money, on the money evaluation. I don't think it could be more true. Yeah, when it comes down to it, like if it does come down to it, it's like, fuck, man. Fuck, man. And at that point, fuck. That, that's why it's important to know what the fuck you believe, dog. <laughs> to stand on some shit. Because, yeah, we, we do. Our, our, our ideas or the ideas that inhibit us or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like the ideologies that uh, animate us. It's like we don't have ideas. Sometimes ideas have us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just like, Deep. cut that shit, bro. Just cut that tie that the idea has over you. It's like being your puppet. You know what I'm saying? Making you say things that you don't really even know might be true or not. Oh, why are you doing that? Why would you be saying stuff like that? The identity. You don't want it to die. You don't want the identity to die. Or that idea. I guess that identity is fueled by an idea or a belief. And it's like if that belief dies and like the identity is just like, who am I? What the fuck is this? And they replace it with something else. And like that's what like I guess arguing or like arguments are doing or like debates or whatever. You're trying to like be like this is this is the thing that like I attach my identity to. And then we're everyone like okay, well I'm I'm like not attacking that, but we're we're like talking about that and you're talking about mine and we're gonna see who the fuck wins. And then like at the end, I guess ideally you would or we would draw parts of ours that are wrong and you would draw parts of yours that are wrong and we would integrate the parts of each other's that are right. And some, and maybe in some cases it's like ninety nine to one, so it's just like <laughs> that shit has to go. Nothing, none of that's sustainable. None of that stands. None of that holds any water in cosmic court, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Whew. But we're stuck to an identity, I guess. Or mm. the idea has you. I think Jordan Peterson says that. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. Sometimes Jordan Peterson's ideas have me. 
<laughs> but I think it's right. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, that, that's, that's the discernment part you're talking about. I think it's so important because sometimes the idea can sound so right. It, can, it tastes so good, so sweet. Yeah. But then, like, you need to have the ability to discern and to detach and be like, well, let me let me really look at this. And if you don't have a – whenever you detach, if you don't have a good fucking barometer for what's actually happening, then you're not going to be able to actually determine – discern the information accurately. But, like, because I think – I remember going through that as well or having that thought because I remember being like – Man, like everything, this guy Jordan, I, I like listened to his lectures for like fucking months at a time, and like after a little bit, I was like, wait, am I just like, like buying his fucking propaganda, or like, is this real? Like, do is it is does what he's saying have validity? And like, yeah, just try to observe it from an objective lens. And like, yeah, there was even times whenever I, I would be watching it, and then there are some things that I wouldn't agree with whenever he would say, and I'd be like, oh, okay, no, that that barometer is still there. I'm not just fucking eating. He's like a spoon feeding me all this shit. I'm Sometimes, actually processing it. <laughs> Okay, that's there, good. There will be sentences he says. I'm like, I don't think that's quite right. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, that thing that even popped up, like the to even check that was like, oh, okay, that's like kind of proof that like I'm not just not being it. an ideologue. I'm not. The idea doesn't have me. Yeah. I'm in control. Yeah, I'm deciding whether or not I believe this. That's good. Yeah, that's a really good check right there. That discernment. Yeah. Man, we're getting out there, <laughs> dude. That's. I mean, that's good though. That's. Because otherwise, you would feel kind of drunk to it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the opposite of being hyper aware to it. You're at the point where you're fact checking facts. You're like, this is supposed to allegedly factual information. You're like, hold on, is that fact right? It's like that's that's tapped into the shit. <laughs> yeah. It's not being like just like the other side is just being kind of drunk to it and just being like, that sounds good. Yeah, it was like taking sounds the, great. the first thing that you see on Google. It's like there it is. <laughs> <laughs> God, it sounds wonderful. God, I'm perfect. And uh, you can tell the difference. Discernment, yeah. that, that, that's not difficult discernment. I mean, this discernment's a tough, it's like a very technical tool to wield because you don't want to be telling a kid like, hey, you're going to have to decide between right and wrong. Use a lot of discernment. They're going to be like, what? Oh. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like a hard thing to, and then also with like young adults, it's like, this thing sounds bad. I know it sounds, it's terrible. It's awful. Like, but it's like, ah, uh, bigger picture scoped out, like surface level, th sometimes things are bad, but like, you got to like. If you're going to critique it, critique it for what it really is, not just like how it looks bad on surface level. Mm -hmm. And that's like what take nuance and discernment, but it takes a long time to like develop those tools. They're really technical. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, or part of the discernment maybe stems from the, uh, I guess that fifth, the, the fifth agreement, right? Like the skepticism, like a reasonable, reasonable amount of skepticism. Yeah. I think that that's important as well because you can't just be whatever information is given to you. Like, I, I guess you want to, hopefully it's, hopefully it's valid to a degree, but also have the ability to be skeptical. And it's like, well, what's really going on here? Just be able to ask that question. What's yeah. really going on here? Yeah, that's super true. That helps me feel Being little... able to go to the writer's room and shit that we are talking about. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's going on here? Oh, I'm tripping because of this and this and this. Or it's yeah. like, oh, he's telling me these things. But he's like, well, maybe he wants me to think that because of this. It's like, well, hold on a second. Yeah. Or whatever the fuck, man. Yeah. You gotta have an ear for it. You can like feel unorganic exchange sometimes. Even in like adware or just like people, it's just like that was off tempo. Like what? Why was that off rhythm? What's going on here? And mm -hmm. like you can feel that. And I also feel like having an ear for the truth is another good thing too. Like I know like what true sentiments sound like, and I know like I know what good energy flow feels like. So mm -hmm. like sometimes when I feel like the off put of that, or like I just feel something off take or off rhythm, or it doesn't quite sound like the truth that I've been hearing, I'm like, what's that? Writer's room? Why'd that happen? Like, uh, just like the ability to like pop out. I think you gotta be able to pop out a lot. If you're ever in there too much, that's probably a problem too. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. what are you hiding from yourself up here that you don't want to look at by going up there? You know? Yeah. You gotta pop out, man. Yeah. I don't even know how to describe what that is. Like, I'm, I'm like, we're using the word pop out or like detach. I'm like, how do I just, how would I describe that? Cause I'm a detached person that needs to detach even like, even me just mm. being like super detached, walking into a movie theater. I got like socially kind of like crept up on. With anxiety and had to like detach from that place too it's yeah. like popping out's just like i think like uh feeling what you're feeling and then like look at yourself as someone who's feeling that and not to be feeling those things yeah buddy right like if, like having a big gash on your arm and instead of being like my arm is bleeding it's like pop you got to pop out and be like this guy's arm is fucked right now this I guy needs help <laughs> yeah i don't know what we're gonna do for him but like uh okay let's start thinking about it like it's like a yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Start thinking about it. Go to the thought space versus the animal space. Yeah. Maybe that's a lot of what it is, too, is going to that, that thing that we have that we animals don't have, mm. which would be like the conceptualization room. The memory, imagination, imagination chamber. Yeah. 
it's like start because then yeah also like negative thoughts creep in people be like ah oh, fuck fuck my arm fuck like i'm sure like fuck that guy and fuck that car but then there's a for me there's like a space there where it's like critical thinking where like i've been in high pressure situations before where you have to be like block out the noise it's like how do i make the situation better like what's what's a i need help i don't have a phone but i can go here there's a phone like you gotta start like yeah what's an actionable thing i could do yeah start thinking about like saving yourself or whatever it is you know yeah yeah i think it gets to a point or it's like uh maybe just like going to that thought space like the first thought i think people go there but maybe people don't explore or like uh go deep enough maybe because it's just like i've, I've expressed a sentiment to my mom before it's like uh just the idea that like whenever you get flustered or whenever a situation arises adversity fucking happens shit falls apart it's like you're stuck like one question that you're gonna ask yourself is like what am i gonna or like what am i gonna do and the immediate answer is gonna be i don't know you know what I'm saying? It's like you, just, you can get stuck in that for like years you know what I'm or like develop that synapse to where it's like, what am I going to do? I don't know. And then you just like back down. And like that's like your immediate synapse. So Ooh. like change the question of like whenever you go to that thought space, instead of asking, what am I going to do? Because you don't know. Like ask, what could I do? And then start exploring. It's like, what could, poss- what could I possibly do? Is there anything I could actually do? Like an actionable step I could do right here and now? Ooh. What could I do? Is there anything I could actually do? It's like, well, I, I could do this. I could do this. And like run the fucking... Run the fucking rehearsal, bro. Just run that stuck shit. stuck there making excuses, blaming people. Mm-hmm. I can't do that because of this. I mm-hmm. can't do that because of that. Mm-hmm. What can you do? Yeah. Well, I can't do that. What can you do? What could you? Is there anything you could do? Like just just like as a problem solver. Could yeah. you solve this problem on your own? Do you have the answer inside yourself somewhere? Mm-hmm. That's deep as fuck, dude. Yeah. Sorry, you got me. But, not, but yeah, but like, yeah, just like, because I, 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 I kind of recognize that the idea of the question of like, what am I going to do? It's such an... Everyone asks that whenever fucking shit falls apart. It's like, oh, what am I going to do? I don't know. That's always the answer. <laughs> I don't know. But God damn it, I'm going to figure it out. I felt that way at the draft a lot of time. Every time I went to my phone to make the pick, <laughs> if you had asked me, I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. No clue. <laughs> I, I would have to get there and look at it and be in the moment and then make a choice. Like, what can I do? Who could I draft? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm For real. What would it look like if I did this? What would it look like if I did that? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I was doing. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. We're in this bitch, dog. Yeah, it was really – like it was funny because I would, I would get to a, a limit when I was with you guys outside. I'd be like, all right. I'm at that place where there's no no new information or inspiration is going to come off of this page and being in this space. The only thing left to do is go be in the moment. Yeah. And like, uh, and then there was like state change, and I was like, I think differently here. Uh, I was like, just start like <laughs> drawing pictures. It's all the numbers. Is fucking... <laughs> John Robinson, it's happening. Just pictures of players, highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking going in, Stephen A. Smith. (laughs) We'll never be nothing in this league. (laughs) Flashes out. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. That's a funny little TikTok. That's hilarious, dude. (laughs) Like every time you go up to the draft board. (laughs) 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 We should do that. That's awesome. But yeah, some uh, some shit that goes on. So yeah, try to ask that question. Try to try to implement that that practice. What What could I I do? do? What would it look like if I did this or that or this? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Is there anything I can do? And then trust your trust your your gut. Like my, your eyes will tell you the same thing every day. Like the eyes will tell you the cake looks good every day. Like the eyes will never they don't change in that regard. But like my internal process software knows how to like see things that I used to not be able to see. And then I have to like remember, okay, yeah, you've known this thing for less time than you've known cake is delicious. Cake has looked good for twenty eight years. You've only known for two years that this nuance is a better nuance. So, like, trust that little nuance. Trust that gut. Like, it's in there for a reason. And have that discernment to, like, not make a neurotic move because you're a neurotic person. But, like, the the good gut feelings, the gut feelings that are, like, pushing you and, like, your intuition is coming out. Like, fo- I have to follow that. And that, like, makes my life better. And then I'll look back and be like, man, I learned that lesson. Like, I, I, I learned that little that little notch right there. And I knew it. And then I didn't do it. And it's like, what the fuck? It's like when you don't use discernment properly, it, like mm. – negative ramifications yeah 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 yeah. but like it happens both ways so sometimes you gotta like know what bad feelings feel like and make sure you don't follow those that's discernment and then know what good feelings feel like and then follow those that's discernment and then you can like suffer both ways too (laughs) (laughs) it's true or i guess you could be less aware about your life there you go feel none of that i don't think that helps no yeah i think i think that's uh i was expressing it to my uncle i think in that same family vacation where i expressed to my uncle and my aunt that uh Y'all are just dope people, you know what I'm saying? But I think we just had a conversation, my uncle and I, and just talking about, I don't even know, just talking about work and talking about life and shit. 
Shit, I was losing it. What were you talking about? <laughs> we're talking about how you could just be less aware and not worry about all that. Because there's like little nuance. Intuition versus neuroticism. It's like you have like tendencies and you have like gut intuition and you need to like carve out not doing your negative tendencies and carve in that to intuition that you feel. Oh, okay, no, yeah, because it was like all like all the information, like all those are the, those are like what we're talking about here, you and I. It's like we're trying we're trying to break down some of the like what we consider to be like the rules of like this existence thing that's going on here. Like what are some of the boundaries? What are the rules here? Yeah. <laughs> and like I was talking to my uncle about it and I was like, knowing the rules to the game doesn't change the game. Or but it does change the way you play the game. Cuz I, I the first way I expressed it to him, I was like, knowing the knowing the rules of the game isn't going to really change the way you play it. Or but I was like, wait, no, that's exactly what they would do. If you, if you knew the rules of the game and yep. you wanted to win the game, yep. you would abide by them. Yep. And then, but but then I was like, oh, but the thing I was trying to express is that knowing, like, finding out all these things, like, looking for these deeper levels of the things that we're talking about, like, you don't have to do that. It's not going to change this life thing. But I was like, oh, but it will. <laughs> you know, because it'll change your actions, which will change this life thing for you. Yes. And I was like, oh, fuck me, dog. But I was yeah. like, knowing the rules of basketball is not going to change the game of basketball. But it'll change how good you could possibly be in the game of basketball. So I was like, oh, knowing the rules of life is not going to change life. But actually, in this game, it does. Yeah. It, <laughs> it does. actually does. Yeah, because, yes, because your conceptualization of life it becomes What are the your rules? Life. How do I abide by them? What's, what's worth abiding by? Dude, yeah. Yeah. We, we generate our experience. Mm-hmm. Like your mm-hmm. life is your perception of what you think a life is. Yeah. You know? So, mm-hmm. like, if you, yeah. The, but then you can't get out of what is the amnes and the isness. But if we frame the rules in a way that we understand them and can dance with them, then it's like. The experience gets really good. That's what that noise yeah, you, means. You get expansion. You can just boop, 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 yes. Thomas Shelby. Yes, bro. Allegedly. We're working on it. Yeah. Dude, look at this shit, bro. <laughs> I'm expanding. No cap. Sorry. Yo! <laughs> my dude got a supercomputer over in that corner over there. Dog. Thank you, bro. We're yeah. gooded to the gills. Like, yeah. The last year we went, like, new car, new computer, new mansion, new job. Maybe that wasn't last year, but that was the foundational structure that let me facilitate this whole exchange. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, sometimes I'm like... We're not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm talking about like the highest level stuff and then I envision myself getting there and I'm like, oh yeah, it's coming from someone that's not there yet. And I'm like, I did just expand a, like a nice little bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. I'm going to keep like going, dude. Like, yes. It's more and more realized, the more. It's part of, I conceptualize it as like being a man and I don't know if that's a fucked up sentiment in 2023. I'm not, it's not, I think there's a way for me to express it that's really true and not fucked up, which is like. There's just times where, like, the nature of what we're called to do in the story, like, requires us to, like, grow up. And then sometimes I'm trying to grow up and then people are like, what is he doing there? Like, what's going on? It's, like, disruptive that I'm growing Mm -hmm. up. And I'm like, it's nature. Like, I'm not sure, like, uh, this is happening. This is, like, I'm going to become more disciplined. I'm going to become more responsible. I'm going to, like end up managing more money i'm gonna like end up living in a nicer place like i'm gonna end up like vacationing nicer places like uh, i don't know how else to describe like a representation of like i'd like to like eventually i will grow up into like a person like an adult Mm -hmm. and then it's like i think that you just can't like i want to be patient with that i'm not trying to rush that but like as that's happening i'm it just is nature, which is, like, uh, something I think that we, like, should account for, but it doesn't always get accounted for as far as, like, people in social or, like, friend circles. It's just, like, um, people kind of – I don't think everybody conceptualizes that, like, time is passing, you know? Not not to its truest – not in its truest form. No, not, not like <laughs> people look at a clock. <laughs> not in the fruit that it not is, though. You know, the essence of time itself. <laughs> people don't look at that. It's too bright. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm like, "What's going on here?" It's like there's a golden rule. A golden rule. It's called time. Time. T- time is happening. You I'm exist like, there. Oh shit. That's you, dog. I think that's one of those rules. Fuck, that I you- am in time. <laughs> shit (laughs) that's one of those rules that are like uh like you said change the way that you play the game Mm -hmm. and so like one of those rules is like for me as like matthew is like life is going to call me to expand and to like put away childish ways and to mature and to like grow up and to grow upward and like be a bigger version of myself Mm -hmm. and like that that's like i have to like lean into that i have to embrace that if I, like, run from it or if I rush to it, then, like, negative consequences in my life. I but love that. I, I want to have, like, the optimum experience, experience like you're talking about, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. And I think it comes from, like, conceptualizing the rule well. 
What'd you yeah. help me do? Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, you too. <laughs> this right here. This, this, this is what happens. <laughs> this is how we do it. For it's love. crazy. I'm talking about you know, breaking down all of our fucking role models and shit. We got just think tanking. This is it, man. This is it, man. This is it. Do this yeah. with your homies. Yeah. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in my, if you're here, you're because you're on the coaching tree. And the coaching tree says, do, do this with the homies. Yeah, talk about this kind of shit. Talk about these ideas. Just think about it a little bit. Be a little more aware. A little more. I think it comes like a somewhat of a meditated state. Like when we're talking about like uh, uh, detaching or pulling out or going to the, to the fucking coach's room or the, 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 the film room, the director's room, <laughs> going to that place. It's like just all, it's all awareness. It's all awareness. It's all your, your mentality. It's like where are you putting your, your focus? It's like your focus sometimes is, is all just right here. And then it's, we're asking you to like take that focus and like, whoop. it's like, wait, what's going on? You're saying, like, I put it on you. Yeah. Because I think awareness, some people hear awareness and they're like, okay, I'm going to be really aware and watch everybody else. It's like, no, like be, watch yourself, be self-aware. Mm. How, how long can you stay still for? Mm. Like what, what thoughts plague your mind? Like what, why are you doing what you're doing? Like. Those things, if you like, if you can become aware of those things, I think like that—that that was me in the movie theater. Just like, why am I nervous? You haven't been out in a while. I was like, okay, that's fair. I was like, what? Also, I'm in a movie. I'm in a public place. You never go to movie theater. This is like a new experience. It's like a new thing that yeah. you haven't done in a long time. It's like making you be Run solo. But yeah, exactly. You're being like jittery, and you and yeah, you don't know how to exist by yourself somewhere. You for, you like don't have a frame for that. You'd be talking to someone right now to not feel nervous. Instead, I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking to me, motherfucker. Yeah. It's me and you, bitch. <laughs> I was like, word. Oh, You're, shit. You're hard. <laughs> and like, uh, yes, but then sometimes it's more critical. It's like, why do I always eat the dessert when I don't want to eat the dessert? Like, why do I get do these things and that thing? It's like, oh, uh, just like mm. start with the awareness. Just the awareness. Like, Yeah, that's where it all starts. A little pop out. A little meditated. I'm a- Med- meditation helps but it's just like the i think meditation is, is the idea of pulling yourself out of the, all this shit is focusing on your breathing because like you have so many thoughts and emotions flying through your your matrix it's like you just focus on what's actually happening and one of the only things that's actually happening is that you're breathing for sure you're breathing or your, your body's breathing you, you you're not breathing your body's breathing <laughs> you just gotta watch that shit sometimes that's for, for thought <laughs> jeez man yeah you don't breathe you're an eternal being. <laughs> Sorry, I was just feeling that. I could feel my body's just a computer. Yeah, my like, body's just a, a dog. Oh, yeah. The blood goes down and up. and The heart goes doom, doom. My heart doom, pumps doom, that. Doom, doom. My lungs. Just push, pull. Push, pull. And I can kind of just sit here and not take my hands off of all the controls. And it, it'll just do this on its own, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that must mean I'm, gonna, I'm a whole different being. It'll just run on its own, dog. <laughs> so that's not you. It's, yeah. it's this thing that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that's watching you. The talking to you whenever no one else is around. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy talk. That's cr- yeah, dog. That's life. Yeah. That's a truer perception of life. Yes, bro. Makes you more res more uh what do they call it? High definition it's resolution. Yeah. Like a higher resolution vision of what's going on here. Yeah, I think that changes the way you approach what's going on here. It's like what- oh, <laughs> <laughs> which would more and more and more and more you more know and saying? more dog it's crazy yes bro so yeah i love exploring these places with y'all <laughs> my dog are you my fucking boy <sighs> let it shit man wanna wanna wrap, wanna wrap her up for the folks I'm going for a little yeah love little you guys bit. thank you so much for hanging out with us i hope you like today's podcast hope you have a great rest of your week it doesn't feel too long till the next time we hang out crush it just keep crushing keep crushing then. don't just stop just keep crushing you got one extra keep going from us like you got, we want to put a cookie in your cookie jar. It's like in your week, if something gets hard, like MJ38 told me to keep going one time and something mm-hmm. would happen for me. Like I, I get to the other side of something. It's like, there you go. Here's your cookie. Here's your cookie. You got this shit. Enjoy that. Fucking earn that shit. Let's go. Let's go. Put in that work, baby. Ooh. Keep moving. Keep growing. Onward and forward. We love you. Love you. Until next time. Till next time. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where